Good afternoon, my fellow Tottenham fans, and welcome back to the Irish Hotspur with your boys Dave and Jack bringing you another build up for yet another game. We only have what seven of them left this season, so let's make the most of the last of this running. But before we get in and find out how the guys are, there is a statement that had been put out by Tottenham not so long ago, and they say, following an incident in which an individual has lost their life, we are doing everything to accommodate the ongoing police investigation, which is of the utmost importance. As things stand, this afternoon's Premier League fixture against Nottingham Forest will go ahead as scheduled. However, the north end of Worcester Road and the whole of Northumberland Ro uh, Park Road will remain closed throughout we shall update supporters as and when we can and ask for fans to be patient and allow extra time to travel. So as we get more updates going on, we will keep you updated. If there's anyone that sees it before us, please keep us all updated. First and foremost, our thoughts and prayers do go out to that individual who did lose their life last night and the family and stuff out there. Um, never nice to see or hear. Um, so look, like I said, we'll keep you updated on how things go there. Any updates that come in, we'll try and be on top of it. But Jacko, how are you today, my man? Um, doing all right, Dave. Um, yeah, uh, good to put out that statement. And uh, anybody who is actually going to the game, uh, good for them to know as well. And of course, always, you know, be safe, you know, anywhere, I guess, you know, you are going, uh, especially late in the evening, but uh, especially thoughts and prayers. But mm -hmm. Dave, seven of them left, like you said. Um, you know, I guess with seven of them left, maybe only seven more times to be delusional. So I guess we could get more delusional and delusional as we go with the last seven games. Um, nice to be on with my worst nightmare, the professor of truth and entertainment. Um, at first he said he was my, uh, my biggest obsession, which is actually, I think accurate the first time. I'm not sure about worst nightmare because often, you know, have nightmares of other things, usually, uh, not usually Tottenham related, but Dave, it's a, you know, a good good panel member that we've gone for here with uh, Mr. Box Office. Been a long time. Dermatron as per usual. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Forest time. I should have worn, actually. Maybe I'll get it on later. I do have a, a lumberjack sort of kind of, you know, flannel type of jacket that maybe I could put on later for the watch long in case we go up 2-0, 3-0 for the, for the deforestation. You might need it with the sound of that voice, Jack. You could do it with some, some heat into you, you know. Yeah, so still have the West Ham bug. <laughs> but speaking of delusional, I mean, Dharma, how are you, my man? Yeah, firstly, may I send our condolences and our prayers to the family of that person who lost their life. You shouldn't have to lose your life in any walk of life, and it's absolutely terrible. So our thoughts and prayers are with the family and everyone going to the game again. Please be safe and please be careful and look after yourselves. It's only a game. Your life is more important. Look, I feel like going into my local court town forest, cutting down a few trees, you know, putting a bit of firewood ready for tonight as we go and deforest the forest. I mean, you know, they're not the same size they were under Brian Clough. They're easy meat, easy picking, and Spurs are going to win 4 0. What more do you want? Just Celtic let me down, the bunch of beeps. So, anyway, come on, you Spurs, don't let me down. And over to the man himself, Mr. Box Office. Yeah, Alex, how are you, my man? I mean, we're trying to work it out. I mean, last week I was your guilty pleasure or your worst nightmare. You switched it up this week on the uh, channel predictions. However, we do have the professor of truth and entertainment, as he likes to be known. Alex, how are you, my man? I'm good. Um, uh, my condolences to the, uh, to what happened today, yesterday. Um, but, yeah, it, it, you know, what I do is I just like to rattle people. I like to test people. That's what I like to do. And... Um, yeah, I think I was just um, testing you, Jack. You know what I mean? I know you. I know uh, I'm your guilty pleasure anyway. You know what I mean? So uh, maybe it was a little bit of a slip of the tongue, but I just wanted to test you. Really, if you're listening, that's it. You know, because people say that I waffle in it. But um, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's um, good to be on the panel uh, with you guys. Um, it's been a long time. Um, it's obviously you want your ratings to go down, isn't it? Because I'm called a ratings killer for a reason. You know what I mean? So. Uh, you know how it is. So, um, but uh, I'll leave, I'll keep my powder dry, like I said. And we'll keep to the game as well today uh, as well. Back to you, David. I'm done. No, look, big up, Alex. Finally, you know, good to have you back on. You know, I do, I do, I do miss you. But however, I do think there's maybe a bit of a bromance forming here between Jack and Alex. So we'll see how that <laughs> goes, uh, you know, throughout the show. Guys, if you've any questions you want to put together for the bromance, please put them in the chat and we'll get them to answer. You know, we can call them yin, yin and yang. Isn't that the expression people use for polar opposites who sort of love each other? So uh should be a good and entertaining show, of course, Alex, to keep us 
maybe a bit level-headed today. So let's see how that gets on. But let's welcome some people in and then we will crack on. So who have we got in here with us tonight? We have Sean EJ Daniel. Uh, good morning for Barbados. Love to see a comfortable win for us today with Richie out. I hope we are brave and start striker in day instead of putting a winger in that position. We will definitely be talking about that a little bit later on in the show, my man. Um, because if you haven't, check out my predicted lineup. Uh, your boy, uh, I think, has come up with the solution. So check that out. Good to see you checking. Hopefully, you're keeping well, my man. Great to see you in the building. We also have Joff Bardry. Hi, guys. Anyone going to the game today? No, spot on. He's just tell everyone about the incident. Big yourself up, uh, Joff. Hopefully, you're keeping well, sir. We have DJ Samuel, member for 17 months. Come on, you Spurs. DJ, good to see you. Really appreciate the longevity of the support, my man, as well. And Legend. hopefully, we can get the win today. Let me know what sort of mood you're in. Like, you know, I know sometimes you like the Crocs or, yeah, you know, the spinning chair and stuff like that. So, good to see you in the house. Big up, DJ. Uh, we also have uh, Alexander uh, Valeris. Let's go. Come on, you Spurs. Big up, Alexander. Hopefully, you're keeping well. We also have Davey Hall. Big up, everyone. Let's see what Spurs team turns up today. And I think that's the biggest question, my man. We also have Stevie Frazier. Big up the Harris Army. Big win today. Come on, you Spurs. Good to see you in the building, Stevie Frazier. We also have uh, special occasions. We need this, guys. Big up, you Spurs. We definitely need to capitalize on Villa's slip up yesterday. V Spurs TV. Hello, I'm going. Well, enjoy the game today. And hopefully we get a nice big result for you on the scoreboard, sir. We also have Rekha V Menem says, will the match be called off? Um, I, I, we'll have to wait and see, to be honest with you on that one. I presume if it was going to be called off, they would have made that decision maybe with the police and that earlier on. So maybe they think they'll be able to get do, do, uh, you know, the game going ahead. We'll wait and see. Wilson T says, big up, chaps. Good to see you in the building, Wilson. We also have Cantab. Roads near stadium closed. Apparently, yeah, there was a loss of life last night, my man. Unfortunately, Gary Swams, come on, you Spurs. Good to see you. We also have Daniela Zito. Uh, she's telling people what are happening. Yeah, very, very sad. And thoughts and prayers go out to that person and their family. We also have Spurs GC TV member for six months. Afternoon, lads. Let's go. Come on, you Spurs. P.S. Everyone smash the like, please. Really appreciate the support and the longevity of it as well. Hopefully, over this six months, we've grown to like each other. That'd be absolutely ideal. So, big yourself up, Spurs GC TV. And uh, look, again, hopefully, we we can get the three points today. We also have Loz, uh, us for Ange. Big up, uh, Dave, and, uh, Dave and Jack. It's a must win today. Come on, you Spurs. Absolutely spot on. I'm of the same opinion. The Belgian uh, Hotspur, good to see you. Big up, Dave and Jack on the chat. Come on, you Spurs. Great to see you in the building, as always. Who else have we got here? Make sure I'm not missing anyone. We've got the Outlaw. Great name. Oh, Mr. Box Office, that's me done. Look, come on, give the guy a chance. I actually like Alex, you know. I think, you know... He's got some good things to say and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, hopefully he'll prove you wrong on this show. But look, just because maybe you don't like someone's opinion, it's no reason to tune out and stuff like that. There's plenty of people that don't like my opinion. They, so, you know, so, you know, let's give everyone a chance here is what I would say. But Alex saying that, people are saying, yes, get in. Absolutely love it. So that's <laughs> We also have King Huddle. Good afternoon. I understand that a substantial amount of the, um, deforestation is due to take place in the Tottenham area commencing at 6 p.m. Come on, you Spurs. And yeah, me and Jack will be changing into dungarees and uh, getting the wellies on for the watch along. Absolutely cannot wait. I said it on the uh, member show yesterday. They called in the two best lumberjacks in the business today to go and commit some deforestation. Um, so there's some trees getting wild out there that need to be tamed, my man. Big up King Huddle. We also have Jim, just a guy who loves Spurs, member for nine months. Big up, Jimbo. Good to see you in the building. No Richie today, which is quite sad. He says, big up, David, Jack and Alex. Uh, and terrible news, RIP. Absolutely spot on. Very, very sad news. We'll take a few more and then we will crack on. William Webb says, a Celtic and Rangers, brilliant game. It was an absolute brilliant game. Dermot, try and forget about it. Try and forget about it. Dreadlock74 says, up the, uh, the Ian Army 2-1 Spurs. We also have Dan Gaze. Um, sorry, off my work account. Oh, for your keeper, well, Danny boy. Thomas says, big up, three points today. Something else will be embarrassing. Uh, come on, you Spurs, in hands we trust. I fully agree with that. It'll be interesting to see what the panel think on that, and we'll get to them in just a moment's time. And um, we also have um, Khadija Gay says, Villa Drew, we must win today. By the way, pat me on the back for that pronunciation. That was absolutely superb. We also have Peter M says, big up to everyone on the panel and in the chat. Come on, you Spurs. We also have JJ Swell says, oi, oi, Alex. 
We also have Oliver243. Love Mr. Box Office. Big up. Love to see that. Love to see that. Big up Ross Page. 4-1. Sun to score first. Shawnee Johnson. Jeez, there's a lot of you in here this evening. We're going to just have to skip half the chat and crack on. Going to be a big win today and a class performance. Simply cannot wait. Uh, I really do hope so. We also have uh, Shem Tan says, hey, Dave, Jack, hope you're both well. Hey, Dermatron, I'm the man that speaks more truth than the government does. Um, Mr. Box Office, love to see that. We also have Sessie's, uh, Sessie's Kami Hammy. Good afternoon, panel chat. I'm drinking 2-1 win tonight. We'll probably make hard work of it, but I'd be happy with three points if we can get them. I think most of us would be happy just to get over the line. You know, for me, it's just about putting points on the board where we can now. That forward line, it ain't really, in my opinion, going to click the way we need it to devastate an effect between now and the end of the season. So it's just a point about taking our chances when they present themselves. We also have the Belgian Hotspur. It's a big up full uh, lumberjack today. Come on, you Spurs. 3-1. Absolutely love that. You know, I do have visions of, uh, you know, about 2,000 people worldwide sitting there looking like they're ready to uh, cut down some trees and stuff like that. What's the right word? Fell some trees or a tree surgeon? Yeah. Something. Belgian Hotspur, so pick yourself up. Come on. And it's also the- it's also quite easy, Belgian Hotspur, for a lot of the hipsters, kind of sort of like myself, to you know mistakenly look like even a lumberjack, you know, despite having no no idea what probably they would be doing, you know, kind of a in terms of cutting down, you know, a, a tree at all. But yeah. I do have plenty of lumberjack related clothing. I must be honest. Maybe I should put on a Spurs related one. Big up to you, Belgian. Uh, big up Belgian Hotspur. A couple more chats here and then we're going to crack on. We've got Mark, member for 11 months. Come on, you Spurs. Big up, Mark. Really appreciate the length of the support. A lot of Marks lately. I don't know what's going on. Um, You know, Very must strong. Have been, um, must have been a lot of action in around the decade where Mark was pop- popular. We also have Adrian Chia. Big up to the ratings killer you got on a <laughs> panel. Uh, he's, look, I I know I I think I know where that's come from, and Alex has sort of ran with it. But I absolutely love it. To be honest, I think it's absolutely hilarious, Adrian. Gia. I mean, look, do you want to say that to your number one fan, Alex? Uh, thank you. Um, like I say, and I, I just wanted to say something. Just like the fact is, like I'm not here to be your best friend. I'm not here to <laughs> be a friend. All I'm here to do is to say my opinion, and that's it. Everyone's got a right to say what they say. I'm not here to change your mind. Yeah, you know I mean, because I'm not going to change your mind. I understand it. I don't care if you don't like me or not. You know what I mean? If you want, if you like me, you don't like me. If you like me, I appreciate it. If you don't, great, fantastic. It, it, it fuels me even more, even more. I've done this years now. It just goes in and out, one, one, um, in and out, and that's it. So for me, thank you for your support. Thank you for everyone's support. Big up Mia, by the way, and the real one, Mia, by the way. We might we might disagree sometimes, but she's a great. She's she's yeah. she's really good. She's really good. Another so professor of truth and entertainment. And um, big up to everyone in the chat as well. Back to you, David. Big up, everyone. Big up, Adrian Chi. You made Alex just stay there. Absolutely love Adrian. that. We also have Godfrey as well. Great to see you. Wembley won, as always. Afternoon, everyone. This uh, evening will not be easy. I'd like to see Gio be used a bit earlier as a creative option off the bench. We'll definitely get into maybe some of that creative options. I know uh, Jose is a big fan of bringing Gio, G- Giovanni Lo Celso in here into this midfield. We also have Dark Zone G says, come on, you Spurs, let's win today and go forth. Today's ref is our look. Well, bringing that up, Dark Sun G. I'll just bring up the referee for everybody, the quick match details. So, of course, this game is being played at the greatest stadium in world football, and that is the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Kickoff is at 6 p.m., could be delayed. Let's wait and see how that goes on. Referee is Simon Hooper, so that's the ref that Dark Sun G is saying is our lucky charm. In the VR room, it's Michael Salisbury. For some reason, I do not like that name, Dark Sun G. If you want to watch the game in the UK and Ireland, it is on Sky Sports today. In the USA, it's on Peacock TV. In Australia, it's on Up the Sports. And in Canada, it's on Football TV. And the injuries for Charleston out with his knee. Forrester out with a fracture. Solomon out with his knee. And Session out with his hamstring. And for Forrest, they've got a warning you missing. But that Chris Wood is on tree and tree, so he's on fire at the minute. Tavares as well, and uh, Willie Bolly also missing for Nottingham Forest. So, Dark Sun G, let me know why he is a lucky charm today. Because when you look at the amount of decisions other teams get, we tend not to get the rub of the green uh, from referees in a lot of games this season. So, let me know why you say he is the lucky charm. Just quickly, a couple more. Rhythmic Renegade, Jose, great to see you. Stephen Owens as well, good to see you in the building. Lee Neary, Mick Hamcone. Um, John as well, great to see you as always. 
Marius Sava as well. Mia W, great to see you. Swim Master as well. Reagan, great to see you as well. And Dice on G says we can't lose to the worst manager in our history. But look, I definitely got a question <laughs> about that because us as Spurs fans, we are sort of superstitious, aren't we? You know, and it's sort of like <laughs> these moments where we expect guys like Nuno to come back and haunt us. So uh we'll definitely get onto that uh, in a little bit. But it'd be embarrassing if Nuno rocks up here and beats us today, to be Quickly, brutally honest Dave. with you. Best beard of any manager in our history, regardless of football. Did you have the best beard of any manager that you've ever seen in a Tottenham oh, manager? Good beard, good beard game. You know, I think I think mine's better personally. But uh, you know, he tried his best to outdo me, Matt Doherty as well. But that was the half the problem at Tottenham. Too much time with the hairdressers and the barbers and stuff like that, and not enough action on the pitch. And um, you know, that's probably Nuno's biggest problem at Spurs, I would say. But big up, Dark Sun G. Really appreciate the support, brother, and hopefully you're keeping well. Uh, just make sure we're not missing any chats as well. Jim, just a guy who loves Spurs, Dave, if you want a waffle. Alex is your man. Back to you. <laughs> well, I am hungry this morning. I am as well. I'm absolutely <laughs> starving. Um, so please, less mention of waffles, the better. Um, to be honest with you, Jim, I'm absolutely starving. And when you look at some of the American food that does be on the TV in front of my eyes with the waffles, the stuff that they create with them, it's absolutely amazing, my man. Uh, you know, dying to get over there one day and just have a big, large waffle breakfast one day. But big up, Jim. Good to see you in the building. But look, guys, let's crack on. Let's get into it. And we're actually going to start with the Chelsea game being rescheduled first before we head into anything else. But Spurs' match at Chelsea finally has a date. It's the 2nd of May, which is a Thursday, and it's been sandwiched in between the Arsenal and Liverpool game. There seems to be a bit of outrage across social media uh, about the scheduling. Scheduling. I mean, Jack, what's your thoughts on it? Um, I kind of wasn't really as outraged as maybe others, probably because, you know, I don't have the privilege of going to the games. And then I also kind of knew that the fixtures kind of scheduled towards the end of the season already was going to be very hard on us. Like, I think we looked at that from the very get go of the season, like, okay, towards the end of the season, we're going to have a chunk of teams that we're going to likely mm -hmm. struggle against or likely triumph against, but it's going to be hard. And um, we, I kind of have the opportunity here to be a bit of a, a title decider as well. And so the fact that this Chelsea game has sort of been lumped in there, I don't know. I'm not all that surprised. And also let's be honest. I just think Chelsea are a team anyways that we always are going to struggle against and we always have uh really bad luck against i'm not surprised that it's been made any harder against us there always seems to be a way uh, we usually have a catalog of injuries or referee decisions going against us it's just it's never really easy so not really maybe dave i don't know i wasn't that, all that surprised by kind of the the choice the fixture Look, also it's getting jam-packed with all the fixtures that they're throwing in every season there's more games more games more games more games these things are going to happen. It's never going to be convenient anymore. Look, you know, a lot of people, there are some people on social media that had your opinion, you know, they're in the comments underneath. I just don't go to the games as well. So I also don't have that, you know, yeah. uh, I don't have that part where I could yeah. be annoyed. Sadly, I feel very much for the fans like Alex, of course, but sadly I'm not in that position to, or maybe yeah. luckily I'm not in that position actually to, to be, you know, inconvenienced in that way. Do you know what? There was two different sort of outrages about it. There was some saying, you know, half seven kickoff Thursday evening. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a tight turnaround after work and trying to get to the game and stuff. But Alex, there was also people saying that, you know, why would they put it in between two of our biggest games coming up at the end of the season between sort of Liverpool and Arsenal? And when, when I sort of sat there and think about it, you know, under Conte, they didn't let us reschedule a game so we could participate in the Europa Conference League, um, mm -hmm. even though they let Arsenal reschedule on. And when everyone was struck down with a food bug against West Ham on the Zanny Gate, they wouldn't let us move the game 24 hours either. They allowed us, you know, they wanted us to play it there and then so they could get the end of the season over with. Is this just another blatant example of the Premier League, you know, hammering Tottenham for no reason? For those examples, I, I think I can I can see your point. Um, in terms of this game, I'm not really worried. I'm, I, I don't feel sorry for us. The players know because they, they knew what we we're going to get anyway. The people mm. I feel sorry for, the fans, because I don't like this. I, I don't understand this 7, 7 30 kickoff, kickoff. I don't get it. I really you, don't you, get you, it. You go to games, right? You finish work and go to games. Why, you know, for people like us, maybe, maybe don't understand why is it incredibly tight? Because, like, you finish work at six, so you have to rush. You might have to rush back to get get back home because you can't bring a bag in, right? So then you have to queue up to get a bag to to put your bag True. in, right? And then it's just it's just such a hassle. You've got a laptop maybe in your bag as well. 
you know what I mean? It's just such mm. inconvenience. And just for me, the games just turned into just, it don't think about the fans. And it's a bit of a joke, really, because they're all crying their eyes out when we didn't have, um, when we had lockdown and no fans in the stadium. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So obviously they forgot about it, haven't they? So it's just like, for me, I mean, I'm not really, like, like I said, I'm not bothered about the players because I knew what they were going to get. You know what I mean? If we're, if we're going to start bigging up these players saying they're this and that and this and this, world-class and this, 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 <laughs> which are not world-class because they've only had one, only had one season, one season done well, but they need to do two seasons, three seasons in the world. All need to say is Newcastle. Your, new, your manager, the manager I don't, I don't like, said the same thing I said, by the way, uh, about Champions League, but I won't get into that because I've got to keep my powder dry on that one. So it's like, you know, but to answer the question, it's just like, for me, the fans are just getting hurt again. Like, I'm not going mm. to the game because I haven't got I, I haven't got a season ticket, so I can't get to away games. But mm. it is terrible. And like this game today, like this game to um today, I mean, how are the Nottingham Forest fans going to get home? It's mm. ridiculous, absolutely mm. ridiculous. You know, they don't think about the fans at all, and uh, mm. this is hard times for them as well. But anyway, I don't want to get into that anyway. But the, mm. it, this is where that's that's my that's where I'm disappointed. That's where I'm mm. angry for those people because they're like me. Mm. You know what I mean? No, they might have families uh, with children mm. that have got to spend money. You know what I mean? It's it's mm. not an easy time. But anyway, I yeah. don't want to get into that. that but that, that just mm. to answer your question, that's it, really. No, hundred percent. I fully agree with you. I mean, you know, they do need to take a, you know account of fans going to these games. You know, when when they when they are maybe thinking of scheduling times and stuff like that, I fully agree with you. Like you laid it there, you finish work at six. You know, you're making a beeline to the stadium. Then you have to queue to put your bag in because you can't. It's just not convenient and stuff. Fully understand that. Great point there, Alex. I mean, Derma, have the Premier League, you know, sort of practically, you know, ended our top four hopes with that short sort of, uh, you know, fixture schedule. Uh, I don't think they have, but I think the Premier League have been very. I agree with everything Alex said, by the way. The fans for it is ridiculous. Mm. And I think the Premier League don't think of fans. The Premier League think of one thing and one thing only. That's money and TV companies. They don't think about the people who actually are the game, which is us, the fans. Um, it's ridiculous, I think, putting three games in seven days. It's absolutely mm. ridiculous. They could quite easily have put that game at the la at the end of the season. I mean, was it 92, 93? We played our last game of the season away at Arsenal. For Arsenal played in the cup final. That was played after the season had finished. So there's mm. no harm of putting a game on a week of the cup final if both teams are not there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It is ridiculous. And it's the Premier League, again, thinking of the Premier League, not thinking of the fans, not thinking of Tottenham. And they're thinking of Manchester United, Liverpool, the top four. That's all we care about. We don't care mm. about the rest of the, the rest of the league. So I think the Premier League, again, it's shown its true colours, mm. are just thinking of themselves. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous. It's just it just feels like to me, you know, over the years, you know, when they've had a chance to sort of maybe help Spurs a little, mm. they tend not to, you know, they tend to make it as tough, tough as possible for mm. us, which I don't quite understand. The wonders, you know, being David Dean being involved and stuff like that got a lot to do with it, with him being ex Arsenal and stuff like that, but. Look, it's just annoying anyway. So, yeah, I just said we'd have a bit of a discussion about it because there were sort of mixed opinions on social media about that. Um, but before we move on, Dark Sung G says Hooper was the ref uh, for both Liverpool and City fixtures. Well, we can change that Liverpool to uh, our, uh, Arsenal now, uh, Dark Sung G, after yesterday's penalty decision. It was absolutely disgraceful. You know, the guy went, touches the ball, gets touched the ball first, and Jesus jumps over his leg, and it's absolutely disgraceful. So, we've got Varsenal and we've got Liverpool now um, at this moment in time. It's an absolute joke, uh, Dark Sung G. But he's saying, uh, Jack, you know, he, he did get the decisions wrong against Liverpool, sort of. I think he's saying, you know, we we done well against City and he was the referee for that when we drew 3-3. So hopefully he is a good luck charm for us today. I must not have been paying attention or hearing you, Dave. I apologize when you're bringing up the, the referee because he's our favorite, Dave. I mean, he's our he's our kind of, he's our one and only. He's kind of our our hero, Simon Hooper, I feel like this season of all of the, of all the referees. He's the only one that I can recall consistently who has been favorable towards us you know I think even uh to a bit last season but this season Dave I mean in games where he's not even refereeing our games I feel like he's done a fantastic job for us giving us you know points you know uh yeah. and, and other fixtures and and as well I just yeah I love everything about Simon Hooper uh Tark Sanji is right the Liverpool of course 
but there have been other games where I think he's been our ref where he's uh, make it. He's just made it easy on us, Dave. Usually with Simon Hooper, you can sort of guarantee that it's going to be a nice day out uh, uh, at the office. He has, you know, everything in his uh, in his mind towards Spurs because, as we know, it just seems like the referees these days. It's just sort of a lottery game. They're just going to pick which team, you know, basically to be favoring and which team basically to be siding with. And Simon Hooper seems to be a Spurs fan. Well, hopefully it gets a grip of Yates this time around. I mean, that guy was allowed to commit. I mean, it was like, it's like, you know, it was limitless, limitless amount of fouls he was allowed to commit. It was absolutely a joke. You know, Basuma had to go and take him out of the game. And, you know, that rash challenge. So hopefully Hooper can get a grip of Yates today. That'll be absolutely brilliant. Dark Sung G also says we have a week off between Newcastle and Gunners, then three tough matches in one week. Uh, meanwhile, Liverpool, Blues, Gunners play matches when we don't play. I think he's probably maybe alluding to that. Maybe it's it's uh, evens itself out, if I may be correct here, Jack and, and guys on the panel. Someone kind of put that in the chat that at the end of the day, you know, the games are sort of, to the most part, you know, evening themselves out. And we also haven't even played in Europe this season. So there have been mm. plenty of times when we have dropped points when we had a whole week in between, you know, the games to prepare for them. So I don't think, again, I have a ton of sympathy with ourselves. and. I know I can understand that there might be a bit of an agenda against us or it's just not much of a surprise that it has been, you know, sort of inconveniently placed for us. But I mean, to be honest, we haven't been given a penalty all season. I'm not going to be surprised that we're going to be given a good, you know, schedule fixture towards the end of it either. And that's how I kind of see it. I really wasn't all that surprised that uh, it's been made anyway hard for us. And I do think things sort of even themselves out if that's what kind of Dark G is suggesting here. But I don't know, Alex, do you? kind of just based off the schedule fixture itself, do you kind of buy into that, that Spurs in any way have been kind of inconvenienced a lot here? No, because we have one game a week. One <laughs> one week, one week we didn't have any, we didn't have any games. I think after Man City, uh, I think one week, we um, because Man City are playing the FA Cup, we've got, we've got no games. So um, this is why I've got my doubts for next season. Yeah, you know I mean, um, and why I need a long term on this because I mean, if you think that we can do it, if if we're going to be struggling now with one game a week, mm. what we're going to do next season? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I, I I don't think we've got any moaning whatsoever. I feel sorry for the fans because I know fans. But you um, were moaning. Pardon? But you were moaning. No, no, no. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> no, but I'm moaning. I'm moaning. I'm thinking for the fans because some yeah. of them need football. They need it. Because yeah. they need to escape from their normal lives, you know what I mean. So I, I I understand it from that point of view, and I was kind of like that. I'm kind of trying to change like that. Like I said, I if you saw my latest video on uh, Mr. Bot's Office TV, I um, need to get to a thousand subscribers five away uh, uh, just to let you know. Oh, we'll make um, that happen today. Don't worry uh, about or, that. Or six uh, six away or seven away, whatever it is. Um, you know, I, I was in my car because I'm trying to fresh reset, restart. You know what I mean? Trying to do, you know, um, trying to do lots of exercise and stuff, you know, trying to, you know, get slim now. You know, so it's like, you know, you, you, I'm trying to try and get away from that a little bit. But some people, they, that's all they've got. Mm -hmm. So it is hard for them when their team's not playing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I get it. But um, I do not feel sorry for the team. They, they should be able to cope. And this is why I say backups are not good enough. No, you know I agree. I mean? So, but I agree. anyway, I don't want to get into that. Like I said, I need to keep my powder dry a little bit. So, oh, look, we'll, we'll, we'll have later questions later on that you'll probably exactly. be able to get your teeth stunk into for sure on that regard. Uh, but big up, Dark Sung G, my man. Really do appreciate the support. At least we think that's what you're getting at. That maybe you're getting at that. They even themselves out. Let us know if we're correct. In a weird that, way, we man. just seem to play a lot of games while they're not playing, and then they're playing a lot of games while we're not playing. Mm. Is I think also a point that mm. he's making, which is interesting. We yeah, true. To watch each other. True. True, but what I will say is it would be a good test of how we'll cope next season having the three games sure. within within the space of seven days if we get European football. Rob Belcher, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, how are you keeping? Sorry, says if you don't know, get actually, Alex, I'll let you do this one. Well, if you don't know, get to know. Um, <laughs> this is my contribution to this great channel. Now back to you, Dave. I'm done. Yeah, big up, Rob, because he's a supporter of the channel. Big up to him. Big up to him. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's 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 um he's always commenting on my comments and stuff. So yeah, I do watch. I do watch and big up to him. Big up, Rob. Really appreciate. Very nice, it. To be Rob. Oh, 
<laughs> Alex, your taglines have gone uh, got gone viral. Um, so you know, take 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 pleasure in 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 that, my man. But Dermo, bringing you in here, mm. I mean, considering the match we have coming up, or sorry, considering the matches we have coming up with the likes of New <coughs> Newcastle, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, yeah. as well as a trip to Chelsea. Mm. For me, today is a must-win game with no excuses. With if we have any chance of returning to Champions League football. Is today's game make or break for Champions League aspirations, or am I being maybe a bit uh, over cynical? I, I think you've been a little bit over cynical, to be fair. Um, right. I think today, well, look, today is important, but there's still a lot more football to be played. We've got two games in hand on, on Villa ahead of us. Well, one game after today. Um, we've got a better goal difference by one goal. We're only three points. So if we beat Forest, beat Forest eight by three or four nil today, we've got a better goal difference. It's in our hands today it is in our hands to actually take top four by the balls grab it tightly and grab it down the road and take us all the way to champions league <laughs> and what other what we do in the other games we have to take it one game at a time today's forest let's concentrate on that let's not get ahead of ourselves mm. let's get a win get into that fourth place and let's put the pressure back onto the aston villa Let's see how they cope. And they're crumbling as well, by the way. They crumbled yesterday under the pressure of playing Brentford. Brentford are a good side, but Villa should not be drawing at home. They should be picking up three points. Mm. They're crumbling. We 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 are we are on, on the intensity. Win today. Let's get today over with first, Dave, and then let's think about the next game when it comes. This is important mm. today. Three points in the bag. Well, look, uh, look, I fully, I fully understand what you're saying. I think for me, the reason why I say it's a must win, when you look at our last seven games, five of them mm. are not, you know, are going to be very tough outings away at Newcastle. Down the years, we don't traditionally do too well up there. Mm. North London Derby, Man, Man City, um, Chelsea away. <laughs> Even in our best years, we barely mm. ever get results there. Liverpool away as well. <clears throat> you know, I think when you look at it, you've got the likes of Sheffield United, Burley, you know, in today's game for me, where you put nine points on the board, you have to. And that's mm. why I say if we don't win today, I think it makes our job a hell of a lot tougher, no? Yeah, it, it, it does, but we will win today. It's not if we won't. We will win today. Forest, Forest are, are not a great side. So we should be beating teams like Forest and Burnley and Sheffield United. And when the big games come around, we should we are good enough to beat them big teams. I know we never win at Chelsea. It's mm. very rare we win at Chelsea. I get that. But we've got a good record against Man City. Liverpool, do you know, anything can happen up in Anfield. Do you know, we can. We've just got to take it one game at a time. Let's get today mm. out of the way. Forest, we should beat Forest. Let's not make no bones about it. Forest mm. are beatable. If we can beat Forest today, we have no right claiming Champions League football. No right whatsoever because we have not been good enough. Today mm. is today we will win because we are Tottenham, we're the mightiest team in the land, and we are going to win today. No doubt about it in my book. Mm, no, look, I, I look for me. I expect to win. I mean, you know, we should be winning. Um, it's just when we've had an opportunity to maybe take control of our own destiny in terms of top four, you know, mm. Fulham. West Ham the other night, where Aston Villa have dropped points. We've also dropped points. And I mean, yeah. we haven't really took advantage of that. Before we go to Jack, Alex, I mean, where are you at with this top four race right now? I couldn't care less. <laughs> couldn't care less. Got to be honest. Um, I think, again, again, I don't even like Postal Cogger. He said exactly what I said in the, in the press conference again. He said, what, 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 what difference does it make getting top four? Like, oh, yeah, players are going to go. Uh, players are going to come to your club. Well, I don't want them in. If I want Champions League, it's exactly what I said last year. Exactly what I said last year. So again, don't like the manager, and he says exactly what I said. And people are telling me, "Oh, you should like the manager." Well, I'm telling you stuff. I'm, I don't even like the manager, and I'm saying the same thing he's saying. So what? What does that say to you? You know what I mean? Do you not look? I, I get what you mean about Pasta Coglu's message. For me, I agree with what Pasta Coglu is trying to do. He's trying to maybe instill a philosophy around Tottenham, right? That top four shouldn't be your only achievement. You should be dreaming bigger. You should believe that you can go on and win the likes of a Premier League and stuff like that. But also within it, without sort of um, diluting his message, Pasta Coglu would be more than happy to try and get top four this season as a platform, as a base to build off heading into next season. If you if you get what I mean, Alex. I, I think it's going to put more pressure on us next season. Mm. Because then we've got to do better. That's the problem. 
That's why he's saying, I want to win the league next season. Because that's the thing, the problem with Tottenham Hotspur. We do well. We did this with Conte. We've done this with Mourinho. We do well. We've done this with Pochettino as well. Then what, what do you do? You need to do better. You know what I mean? That's what teams do. You have to do better. Because that's the way the pressure is. Because like I said before, if it was that easy for Tottenham Hotspur after that embarrassing season last season to do well this season to get in Champions League, do you think it's going to be easy for other teams to do it then? You know what I mean? Just mm. need to follow what we just did with um, after we follow Brighton. So this this is the point I'm making. You know what I mean? I'm always about the long term because I've seen this how many times and that's it for me. You know, like I said, I'm not going to... You, you should be watching Mr. Box Office TV. You know my message already. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not that guy. And again, before I say anything, I'm not having a go at Dermot. I'm not having a go at you, um, J- um, David. No, I know we know. What you're we, like. we know we I'm know. not having a go at you, Dermot, because I know what you like. I've known you for years now. I know what you're, you're going to be, how you were with Spurs. And I'm definitely not having a go at Jack, who, let's be honest here, I have to say this, has improved massively on this channel, by the way. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant contributor, by the way. Uh, I'm so impressed with him, by the way. Yeah, and need to be acknowledged as well, by the way. Yeah, and that's thanks to Dave as well, because he's got a bit more bottle in that right now. I think since that that argument, me and you and Hoybier, honestly, you've grown so much. Sorry, Dave, I didn't want to go off the subject, but I had to say it. You know no, I mean? no, but, I love that. <laughs> but, you know, and so it's like, for me, yeah, just like, you know what I'm going to, you know what you're going to get with me. I can't, I can't lie anymore. And it's like, I, I'm sorry, I'd rather be in Europa League and Conference League because at least we've got a chance of winning. We need to start winning. I'm sorry. This 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 mentality of just saying, oh, we've we got... So we, this taking part, I'm sorry, I'm bored of it. This is what... And players leave because of that as well. So I, I'm sorry, no, sorry. I was trying to be calm about this today, but when you said that, I was just like, this is why we've got people like blooming... Emerson Royale, our club, and I'm sorry if we're going to start talking about Emerson Royale. I want Hoy, I want Juan Foyth back at my club, Ben, because he was better than him all day long. And look what he did gone to uh, gone to Real Real, won Europa League. Don't need to say anymore. Back to you, Dave. I'm done. If you don't know, get tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jack, are you sort of with Alex? I think Alex, Alex is probably you know trying to go along with the Ange Postacoglu message that look, top four isn't the be all and end all at Tottenham. I mean. But in terms of this season, in terms of what we maybe expect you coming into this season and stuff, you know, do you, today is a must win, right? We can't really afford to let the opportunity slip much more and not take advantage of these Villa slip ups. Yeah, a few things, Dave. Like, I really agree with you that it's no room for error here in these last few games. Like, that's why the teams, you see a huge turn up in every team's level and every team's sort of output and their overall efforts, really, right? You have teams mm. that are battling for every point every goal, like Postacoglu put it, when it comes to Forest, who are trying to survive, trying to stay in the Premier League. You have teams that are maybe have a shot or even a hope of trying to get a little spot in Europe who maybe never do. They're going to be battling for every point and you know trying to turn out the best results they can. Teams that are battling for these Champions League or European spots, or even like how Postacoglu puts it, really, like sort of finishing the, the season strong because that can really send good positive vibes to the next season. And good building, you know, sort of a spot for the next season as well. So I actually agree with you that we do have to win these ones. And we have dropped points in other games where we probably needed to win them. And uh, we didn't. So it's just now this is the time where it's just just have to do it. And we've even said really kind of no matter how we do it or no matter how pretty it is, just kind of have to pick up three points in these sort of mm-hmm. games. So I agree with you there. When it comes to Champions League versus no Champions League or even how Postacoglu sees it. I agree with how he sees it because he's the manager. Like, I think that's the best way to look at it. Like, it's about improving as a team. It's about looking at, you know, sort of where you started. Do we look like a much better outfit? Can we start to uh, build things? Can we start to win things? Mm -hmm. Are there the signs of that? You know, just getting into a competition, you know, doesn't guarantee that or doesn't indicate that. And his use of Newcastle is an example is a really good one I think a very good example of it um but that being said I think I'm a fan I'm not the manager so I kind of do want Champions League I kind of do want Spurs to finish in European competitions because it's fun Mm. we get to watch more games we get to Mm. see us go to amazing different cities and you know come up against amazing clubs that you know normally we don't get to in Mm. a season and oftentimes too get to see kind of different narratives or different stories uh, be written about Mm. players who perhaps don't always get to play, you know, in certain competitions or maybe don't always shine in the Premier League, but oftentimes mm. do shine in the Champions League. Sonny was one of those players, really shined 
I think in the champions league and, you know, kind of carried us through competitions at times. And that's what makes those European nights special. So I would love to finish in champions league or really any competition whatsoever. And then also lastly, I think it's lovely to hear that maybe Alex, Dave, he's our PR machine. Actually, he's the PR machine for the Irish Hotspur. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He's, he's doing a good job of, he's doing a better job than what me and you would do for sure. Uh, so <laughs> big up Alex on that, but just quickly, look, I think, Look, we all want trophies, right? I think, you know, the majority of people, you know, are fed up of sort of always being the nearly men or not being there, you know, sometimes and stuff like that. So I think we all want trophies. But when you look at what we've got left to play for this season, the highest we can realistically achieve now is top four. For me, I want to take that heading into next season. There's a new format in the Champions League as well. It's all going to be one big league. I think you get six to eight games in that league and, you know, and stuff like that. So for me, I want to be in that format. I want to be in that process. Um, now, look, ideally, you want to use the Champions League to attract better players. Now, whether that's going to happen, whether we're going to still go down the same route that we are at Paratici, I mean, that's that's what remains to be on undecided. But I'd like to think if we get Champions League football, Postacoglu would hopefully have a bigger budget available to him that maybe he can work with here at Tottenham Hotspur. But... um. Look, I'm just bored of having no European football uh, this season. A lot of people said last season, let's just drop out of Europe altogether, have one game a week, concentrate and stuff like that. Okay, I'd argue it's probably worked out to our benefit, but my God, am I shit bored during the bloody week. And I cannot take it any longer. I need some sort of European football here. So keep me going during the week um, and stuff like that. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, just quickly, uh, we do have Moondog um, in here. So Alex... Um, he says, um, Alex, what do you actually like, mate? When it comes to Tottenham, I think he's saying, Alex, you talk so much, but say nothing. Um, look, what I would say is let's all try and respect each other. I think I think Alex David, does make fine. some good it's points fine. and stuff like I've, that. I've, I think I've, Alex has a mentality of trying to win trophies and that, but I can understand why he probably rubs people up as well. Look, I rub people yeah. up the you know the wrong way as well, like that. But um what he wants to know what do you actually like about Tottenham? Well, like look, you don't have to answer that. You can choose not to answer that. No, uh, it's fine. It's, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Like I said, I, I'm going to get it. <laughs> so I don't really care anymore. I'm just, like I said, um, like, Big up to you, Mundo. But the thing, like I said, I, I like the, I like going to the games. I love going to the games. I, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I used to, like I said, I used to, and a big up to Adrian in the chat because he asked me this question on the channel. Who? He asked me, Adrian when's my Schrocker? break? Yeah, Soka, Soka, Soka. Soka. Um, Soka. Um, and he asked me a, a question about um, when's my breaking point with this manager or with this. And I said, my breaking mm. point was done when Mourinho came in. So that's why I'm like the way I've been for so long now. Because mm. I was like you, Dave, and um, and Dermot before as a kid. could not I, could, I couldn't stand people having to go at Tottenham. Could not mm. stand it. We were, we were like probably enemy number one yeah. that you looked to be, especially when we had Christian Gross. And it was like Kevin Keegan versus K Christian Gross, and they were talking like Christian Gross was the we were the evil ones, and um, and Keegan was the 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 the, the, the hero, mm. and I just it just really grinded me, and it just grinded me so much. I got so annoyed about it, and I just think after the time's gone on with Martin Yell was one, Harry Red that was the other, and Ma P Pochettino was just the last straw for me. I'm sorry, it was the last straw for me. And that was it. That was where I was done, to be honest mm. with you. And and then I think also after George Graham and Glenn Ordle as well. Just so much. I think just as a kid, it just grinds you down so much. Yeah. And that's it. So, I mean, you I know love... You me love... down, Alex? Was, was huh? that all, all the other kids in the playground who jumped on the trophy route, you know? that, that yeah. That's what ground me down. Because every day you're hearing, you're a loser, you know, spuds, all this <laughs> sort of jazz. I just, like, just wanted to kill people. <laughs> um. Yeah. Moondog, he's been exceptionally nice to me. Alex has been nicer to me than my own missus has this morning. So, you know, I'd say, you know, keep him on the panel as much as possible for now. But uh, I think Alex, I think, has also had plenty of good things to say today that I've actually personally mm. agreed with so far. And I think the, I most like likely, the most likely person to speak waffle is probably me in the next session, because you can even hear my voice right now. You could tell you could tell I'm a bit sick. Mm. I'm a bit stuffy in the head at this moment of time. So most likely <laughs> person to talk waffle is probably me in the next, you know, 15 can minutes. I, so big up can I just dog. say something, though? Ben Little Court is definitely grown on me. Definitely grown on me. And and the reason why I say it is that I've I've had a year with him, more than a year than him with him now, 
Yes, mm-hmm. I gave him the target set tag saying he's a Juventus reject. But yeah, he has some good form, yes, with Conte. Then he had a go at Conte, right? When he was having a go at him. And he, he see a little bit of leadership. After that injury, it's taken me a couple of games. And I think it was after Fulham. It was after Fulham. Yeah, Man United, he was impressive as well. He's the best mm-hmm. player on the pitch. But it was after Fulham. We were down 3 0 or 4 0, or 3 0, I think it was. He came on with Hoybier. Hoybier played well. He does a job all the time. And I just saw that grit. And he, he hates losing. He mm. absolutely hates losing. Yeah. And I think he's a better leader than Son. Sorry. Don't see it. Great player. Not having a go. Because he's got the arrogance. No, no we're not having a go at Son as a, a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant player. I'll be deluded thinking that. But I just see something from Vicario and him. And yes, obviously, Oibier. But he's going to leave, I think, um, mm. looks likely. But him, he's got something different about him. Better than Madison's got, and definitely better than Basuma's got as well. And I've just seen it. I'm seeing a little, and I'm starting to, he's really grown on me now. I think he definitely has, needs to stay because he's mm. going to be a key. That's all I need to say. Lastly, Today, Chris Moondog. Alex, Moondog does like a first goal score, and maybe you guys can agree yeah. on this. What, what's your first goal score today? What, what today? Scores? Oh, it's going to pick the first. It? Son, son. All right. it's got to be because I, I don't have any belief in Werner, the below average Shane Long. Don't forget that. Moondog's going to fade that one. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, oh, Moondog's gosh. putting a fiver on it now. If he wins, <laughs> Alex will be his best friend. If he loses, he'll, he'll rage out on oh, Alex even up. more. But Moondog, good to see you in the building, man. Hopefully, you are keeping well. Um, and then we have this from Justin Garley Love Spurs. Now, look, I just want to say, actually, I'll say it after. No, I'll say it now. Look, I don't want to pile on on Alex. I actually like Alex. I think Alex is a good guy. I think it's okay to disagree. You know, I disagree with Alex on on a lot of what he says sometimes, to be brutally honest with you. But let's try not to have a pile on on the guy either. For me, I've always stated this. I've always liked hearing everyone's opinions, whether it's whether I agree with it, whether I don't. And, you know, it's the only way. Opinions is what makes the world go around. So, you know, let's not, I'll I'll try and be, uh, you know, I hit on Alex all the time, you know, I do, I, I do, I, I do like the guy, you know, and I want to stress that to people, you know, when you get to know the guy and stuff like that, and, you know, you speak to him for a couple of hours on the phone and stuff like that, you get to really understand maybe where he's coming from uh, and, and, and stuff like that. But Alex, uh, Kate is only retorting to what you did say on this show. She yeah, says, bro. Alex always saying the fan base has a loser mentality, yet wants to finish in the lowest European competition. That's a contradiction in terms I mean, it's a fair point to make. It's a fair point, but the problem is, is, is that this was a build. This was a build. So, and even Poss again, again, not the fit of the manager again. And he said it himself. He said it himself. And I don't even like the guy again. He said it himself in his press conference again. So it's like, so it's like, it's a build. So for me, I wasn't that bothered about where we finished. You know what I mean? So for me, mm-hmm. like, for me, the best, I mean, we're going to get Champions League. We're going to get Champions League regardless. But, we know in history, in which I'll go on history now, not stats, because <laughs> then we got look at stats to see how Kulazeski's doing the best is the best assist when we all know he's not that great. Let's be honest here. So, like like I said, it's like for me on history, we haven't done well when we've done well the, that that previous season. That's where my concern is. Now they can prove me wrong. You know what I mean? Everyone knows where I I will be back in this manager when. So per person will back their manager when he's going for a bad run of games, which everyone knows what I have stayed on that. But if they do better than what they're doing next season, hence I, 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 I've got more chance of changing my mind at the moment. But at the moment, there's nothing different what I've seen before. I've seen this before. I'm sorry. So it's no losing mentality. It's just that like, I know my club. I know my club. If I had what Liverpool are doing right now, and the, the reason why I say it, look at Arsenal right now. They back their manager through hard times when people were saying Arteta out. We've never done that. Liverpool went through bad times. Yes, they've got to finals. They've got to semi-finals. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they stuck with their man. We've never done that in my time as a Tottenham fan. Yeah. So there comes a point where you're sitting there thinking, and to be honest with you now, I'm, it's not feeling good seeing Arsenal what they're doing at the moment. No, I really not. want us to beat them now because I'm sorry, I can't. St- if they win the if they win the Premier League, it will sting. It will mm. sting like West Ham win the conference. The conference league, it stung. Mm. It stung. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to sting even more. I'll tell you now because it's getting on my nerves now. Yeah. And now it's really getting to me now, to be honest, y'all. But anyway, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to get into semantics or anything about this. But if anything, Spurs fans do probably have a winning mentality because we seem to sack our managers like Watford do, you know, every three months. So we kind of (laughs) hold our managers to a pretty high (laughs) sort of, you know, caliber to pretty high standard, no matter what sort of resources or tools they have uh, available to them. We don't give them too much leeway. So I'd say, in fact, we have a pretty ruthless mentality. Mm Uh, at times but no reason to really get into it and uh appreciate you uh appreciate you kate thank you for uh yeah. contributing as well as a member uh for six months kate and i know it's probably been a lot longer than that big up to you kate really and i would say it. it was a fair challenge as fair as well a fair rebuttal kate so fair play fair play on that we also have adrian chia up up basuma turkey alex can't do worse than me i mean alex uh you know how long will it take before we see you maybe in a turkey with basuma and his number on the back <sighs> Listen, I don't, I don't really have that many. Play- I mean, the only player what that would, I've made. What would make you buy a jersey with a player's name on the back? I don't think it would would happen. It has, to, it has to really get me personal. Um, I would have had, I would have had a certain guy on there. I can't really say on the channel because everyone gets so uh, upset about it. But <laughs> I mean, Thanks. you know what I mean. But he was my, he, he was my favorite. I've got to be honest. Um, but um. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? I, I, I feel a bit sorry for Dermot because it's like everyone's going to ask me the question. I'm like, I'm oh, not taking over the show here. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I want Dermot to start have say you, something. You, you know what I mean? You know, I, mean I feel a bit like, bad. I feel a bit no, bad you, for the you, guy here. You've rattled everyone's cages, so they all they all want for a bottle. To <laughs> Everybody's point, adding you. Like Everybody's yeah. so, uh, I'm uh, just a warm up guy for you, Alex. I just come on two minutes before the stream. I'm your warm up guy. Oh uh, no, uh, I just feel bad because I'm sitting there thinking I actually agree with David. I was like, I was sitting there till the other side. I was like. Well, they will have a go have a go at me. I'm like, if you get done with it, you might as well have a chat with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, my my fan Pat Wheelin hasn't come into the chat yet, so I'm safe for a while before he starts coming in and starts well, we badgering did, me. So yeah. We did have Leighton <laughs> Evelyn in, you know, uh, predicting your your scoreline there. <laughs> Adrian Chia, yeah. I think yeah. my Richarlison home kit from last season is still on equal par with the Basuma third kit, if not still mm. lower, because I think that most of the fan base still hates Richarlison um for the most part so despite what he's contributed this season so i still feel like you know that one is still a hard mm-hmm. one you know to convince people of wearing so i think your basuma third kit is still going to do just fine and uh i must say at times basuma's also easily had the best hair of the season and that might have been in dave and i's early prediction for best hair of the season so i think he's done just fine uh no but look adrian t you know i have he had a good game against West Ham. Postacoglu called it outstanding. So, uh, you know, hopefully he follows that up here today. And yeah, we'll Dave take this from Stevie D, who's driving home in his car. And then we'll get on to the next question and get Darmo involved here. He says, I find it mildly amusing that we spend so much energy calling out our old fans <laughs> and what happens uh, to tribalism. That's where I'm at with it. You know, I, I, I do like the tribalism in football. No matter what mentality any of us have, we ain't picking the team or buying the players. Absolutely spot on. With that one there, uh, Stevie D couldn't agree more with that, brother. Tribalism, I absolutely love it when it comes to football. Um, But look, guys, I've got one more maybe question before we maybe sink our teeth into some more nitty and gritty of Tottenham. As Spurs fans, we're all sort of superstitious. It's like when everyone, anyone returns to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and used to be affiliated with us, we almost expect the worst. So are we worried that Nuno will have something to prove on his return to North London after his disastrous short tenure? And I mean, we'll start with you on this one, Dermo, and then we'll work our way uh, around the panel. What's your thoughts on it? Very short answer. No. Once a garden gnome, always a garden gnome. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been more successful in garden centres than he has been as a football manager. But Darmo, so, they did beat Fulham during the week 3-1. We, like, we got battered by them 3-0. Yeah, Fulham, Fulham, I mean, Fulham turned, yeah, they may beat Fulham 3-1, but Fulham are hot and cold. This, yeah. this is not the forest, and Nuno's not the greatest manager in the world. He's a garden gnome. Always has been, always will be. So I have no fear whatsoever. He's going to walk into the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, crap his pants and run out again. Because he's that scared. I've no problem. God, nah. We'll win today. I'm sorry. I I just don't respect the manager. He's a garden gnome once and always will be a garden gnome. (laughs) I do not respect him. I'm sorry. 
Well, people in the chat, let us know whether you agree with Dermot or whether you disagree. I mean, this guy did leave Tottenham to go on win a, a league out in there. What was it, Saudi Arabia or something like that? And uh, you and you know, me could go out to Premier Saudi League. Arabia, Dave, and win a trophy out there. You and Jack could go out there as the Brian Clough and the double act of Nottingham Forest back in the eighties and win win ultimate Alex Ferguson type trophies out there. Alex could go out there and become the become the become the Bill Shankly of Saudi Arabia. I've become the Bill Nick of Saudi Arabia. Do you know, anyone can win in Saudi Arabia. It's not a football league. Do you know? We'll have to put that to the test one day. We'll have to set Dermot up a football manager with uh, you know, a, a, a season in the Saudi ahead of him. See how I, he gets I tell on. you what, I have downloaded that. That is that is content coming on the channel for next season. That's been sorted at this moment. I am doing something along that line. Call me for your so. tactics, lad. I'm the tactician on that game. I outsmart the game with my tactics. Well, I, it's too I, good. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, Dave. I will be calling in Jack as my right hand man, as my as my technician. You're the motivator. That's what I'm no, getting you with. No, I'm not That's... being demoted. Uh, I'll just take up my own club in Saudi and stop you and Jack from winning the league. Uh, but look, what we'll do is we'll move on. I mean, Jack, oh, are you maybe a bit superstitious around Nuno today? I mean, he did do his best to nullify some with his tactics and stuff like that and not get the best out of him. So maybe he has the answer today. I mean, we haven't faced him. Last time we faced Steve Cooper, and I think Steve Cooper pretty much set up the most defensive you possibly could. And that was at home. And I think it was because he was kind of was battling it out for his job. I think Nuno, despite how defensive we think he is, will set up slightly more, I think, tactically, I'll just, for lack of a better word, better, um, simply because it felt like for us, they were playing at home. I can't even remember how many times they even went in our own half, it felt like, in that game. They really did, you know, give it no effort at all. They were just looking to not concede. Once they did concede from Richarlison's header, just made the game really hard for them because we just kept continuing to squeeze them and make it really uh, difficult for them. And they had no answers when it came to counterattacks. Whereas Nuno, I think, is a counterattacking guy. Like, I don't think he was ever meant to be a Spurs manager. But let's be honest, like when it comes to Wolves, that Wolves team made it to Europe from counterattacking and were one of the best teams in the championship in that time as well during his come up. And I think Nuno isn't an idiot at the end of the day. And I think he probably will lose this game, but I wouldn't doubt that he has some sort of counterattacking scheme or some sort of plan up his, uh, up his sleeve that could catch Spurs out. I do see uh, force uh, actually scoring in this game because they have good players on the counter. They have Gibbs white, they have Hudson, Adoy, they have Alanga, all very good players, all very speedy as well. And uh, have been effective for them in that counterattack. And like I said, I think Nuno, was never supposed to be a Spurs manager, but at one stage or another in his career, he was a very effective counterattacking manager mm -hmm. in the Premier League with that Wolves team of Jimenez and Triore and other guys in that side. And mm -hmm. I think he has a similar team with this Forest team. And look, you know, it wasn't all Nuno's fault at Tottenham. You know, you look at that dressing room that got rid of Jose Mourinho on Conte as well. So, you know, I wouldn't put it all down to being Nuno, being being a really, really bad manager in that regard. I do think maybe as Spurs fans, we are a bit harsh on him. Look, don't get me wrong. He didn't get off. You know, he didn't have the best of tenures. But let's not forget that dressing room was absolutely chaotic and no manager stood a chance. And on that basis today, Alex, I mean, Nuno will come here with a point to prove, right? You know, he knows that the Spurs fans don't like him. They were, you know, they did boo at the Manchester United game to sort of get him sacked and there's a lot of noise made about him on social media we can't pretend he ain't coming here with a point to prove right? Um, yeah but I don't rate him as a manager I don't know how this man I don't know how he came became top of manager oh yeah because of strategy um, he was cooking I was told um, he is but cooking yeah, and, um, and, and, but, and I've, um, I've seen you praise him since then oh well that's very minor very minor <laughs> Um, but yeah, just I just I I actually agree with Dermot. We should be beating them. We should be beating them. As far as yeah. I'm concerned, the, the the only way we're going to get beaten is if that front line doesn't score goals, and that's where my my worry is. I'm not worried about the defence, mm. um, even though I I still think that um, I do worry about um, Van der Ven's hamstrings because those hamstring that hamstring is just going to go. Mm. It's just going to go. It's going to go, um, and. Yeah, maybe they'll try and do inverted, but I think we've got enough um, because I think Vicario will um, will save us. I've got I've got a little bit of belief in him because he has been very good this season. It's just that attack. We need to score goals. You know, what I mean, it doesn't matter about the defense. We're an attacking team. It's the yeah. it's the it's the it's the, the attack that needs to score goals and um, and just pay, punish them 
whenever we have a chance. That's it. Yeah. Simple as that. If we do that, we finish off Forest, and that's been the key this season. Mm. And that, that's been the key this season, and that's why I think the players are not good enough because he's told. I mean, again, I'm defending Postecoglou again. He's told them to express themselves. Are they expressing themselves? No. No. Look, I don't know what's gone wrong in the world, but I actually agree with you on that. You know, the day me and Alex start agreeing with each other is uh, probably a bit of a problem well, did I, did I, <laughs> in that regard. I you up for, have I picked you up how many times on other channels, yeah, saying that you gave, you told me about Harry Winks, Dyer, Davis, Sanchez. We were arguing all through mm. lockdown, me and you. Mm. Hammond and Tong Terrible on other thing. channels as well. We are Tottenham TV. You're my like arch nemesis, and I've said to you, I had to give you props because you're the one that was going on about it. So I had to say sorry to you. I had to apologize to you, David. Did I? Did I have to? You know what <laughs> no, I mean? So you, you didn't have to. You didn't have to. You know. But look, that's that's a great thing about football. You know, we all have discussions and debates and stuff like that. And you know that, that that's the good thing about football. You know, I like it when people don't always agree with things and stuff like that. And uh, look, are we for the better of it since them guys are gone? I would argue. Yes, but I'm still not where I'd like to be in terms of putting trophies in the cabinet. So, you know, that's the next step that we need to take with this recruitment. But look, we'll see how Nuno gets on today. Hopefully, um, hopefully he doesn't turn up. Hopefully he gets it completely wrong. But um, I do want to find out off the guys. Maybe Alex has already alluded to it. So I'll start with you on this, uh, this one, Alex, and then head to Thermo after. I mean, Spurs have struggled to build momentum and find rhythm in a stop-start campaign. What happened in the first 10 games is a long way away, uh, you know, and since then, even with all our injuries back, it's still been sort of stop-start. What's the biggest area of the squad that Ange needs to address over the summer heading into next season to bring that consistency heading into next season that he wants so that he can go and compete for a, a, a title? Players that can compete, not players that are backups. So when I hear saying, oh, we need to get this player like Timo Werner for backup, backups are not good enough. I'm not looking for a world-class player. I'm looking for somebody that is going to say, well, I'll take your place. You've got to fight for your place back. Not just come back into the team to just take your place. No, that don't work in the top team. It don't work. If, it, if, it, if you're seeing that, you might as well just end up like Manchester United right now. You know what I mean? Mm. Or Chelsea. You might as well just end up like that. You know? That forward line needs improving big time. I'm sorry. Mm. I've been at the stadium. I'm going to be at the stadium today. They don't excite me. The only player that's excited, the only player that has got it, has got the arrogance, got that, um, got the arrogance, who's got the swag, is Son. All the others are too nice. Even Johnson. Johnson is too nice. Too nice. Yeah? Too many nice people. Like, if you look at the Man Chester United back in 1999, you had Cherryham, Cole, mm. Dwight York, Solskjaer. Two of them, or f- three of them, didn't even like each other. Didn't even like each other. It's like enemies, better to have you as your enemy, right, than your friend. Mm. Yeah? Look what they won. They won Europe, They won Champions Leagues, FA Cups, Premier Leagues. Yeah? Nice people don't win anything. Yeah, some of them do win something. I just need to say another name as well. This is why I criticise um, Son. Um, Henderson. I think he's bang average. But he won trophies at Liverpool, though. He won trophies at Liverpool as a captain. That's what it's called. Yeah, leaders. That's what it's called. Yeah? Because this is what you need to do. And I, I could put homage to somebody um, because uh, a big event's happening like this. We, want to, we need to have this um, mentality of what that whoop that thing, yeah? Whoop that mm. thing. That's what it's called. Yeah, whoop that thing. Yeah, that's mm. what we need to have, a, that 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 sort, sort, sort of mentality. Yeah? Be like some of my boy, uh, Trick Williams. Do you know what I mean? From WWE. You know what I mean? Yeah? <laughs> did you watch, did what, you watch um, the uh, Royal Rumble last night? Yeah, not, not, not this mentality of just, oh, well, oh, we might have this, we might have that. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's the mentality you need and that's what Postal Call is saying. You know what I mean? And stick to the, his system as well. Because, I, like I said before, I'm filled up with people saying we need a second plan. We don't need a second plan because he told us in June he's not going to do a second plan. Or he didn't mm. want to be hired. So, yeah. Tottenham fans saying, oh, he needs a second plan. He needs to change it up. We well, told us that he's not going to change it up. So, what, mm. what, are you, what are you moaning about? Look, I, I agree with you when it comes to the second plan. I mean, you, you, you know, manager. <laughs> 
you know, people would argue, oh, Klopp has done it and, you know, Guardiola has done it at time, but they've implemented them as they've, you know, once the squad is there, they've implemented different changes at the start of a season or during the season as teams have gone on because they trust everybody. Right now, Postacoglu is going through that squad and seeing who's good enough, who's not. By changing plans and stuff in every game, he'll never know who's good enough to play the actual way he wants heading into next season if he starts doing that. It starts convoluting things and stuff like that because some players are better suited to defensive systems then they are attacking systems and stuff like that. But for me, I think Posta Coglu, I think his football has been good enough this season. I like it. I think the goalkeeper has got absolutely spot on. The back four, I'm okay with. People will say, you know, oh, they've conceded just as many as they did last season. Yeah, but we're playing an attacking system with two men defending compared to 11 underneath Antonio Conte. Um, you know, or 11 men behind the ball. And then you go into the midfield. I think over the season, they're sort of starting to maybe grasp it. I agree with you when it comes to that front line. I think that is the biggest area where we need the overhaul, but when I look at that front line, I think they play as individuals. Werner, Johnson play as individuals, and they're not, they're not, they don't have that 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 speed of thought and that that maybe Son has to be able to link up with him effectively. Uh, I would argue, and I know people are going to say, but Dave, we've only we're only a few goals off where we were last year again. We played a defensive last year, system last year, and we had Harry Kane tallying up them goals. When you're playing an attacking system and the amount of time we spend in the opposition final third, we do not create enough. We do not score enough. I'll be brutally honest. I'm happy to keep possession. But when it comes to the final third, I find myself really bored at times this season. We don't have that je ne sais quoi, that bit of difference, that bit of flair, creativity. You know, we just don't have it in the team. And the players that we've brought in to do it, a lot of them just want to take the easy option out. You know, and um, for me, I do think that's an area where I would like to see improved in the summer. I do agree with you on that, Alex. I mean, Dermot, where are you at with it? Look, the... You don't have to take, pick the same area. I mean, if you've got a different area you think needs addressing, go for it. Uh, look, I, I, I think the front three does need addressing. I, I think it's the only area in the team. I think midfield were all right. I think the back five is... is. Well, I said it yesterday in my predicted lineup. That's the foundations you need to build your team off. It's a back, solid back five. And I think we have that solid back five. The midfield, we probably could do with the number six in there. But I try Hoybier in there for the last seven games of the season. I mean, let's see if he can do that role. But it's the front three. We need a goal scorer. I, I mean, I said it in the last game, drop Sonny and bring in Richie against West Ham. I was sort of proven right because Sonny offered us nothing up front where Richie would have offered us something. But was Richie with his knee injury? Was Hans trying to protect him for not playing him? Did that play into it? Probably. I think we do need the striker. Though I disagree with Alex, I think Werner can be an asset to the team. I think him and Johnson down both wings, we look more we look more effective and more dangerous with them down the wing. If we had a proper number nine there, I think we'd be in a far better place. I think the games we lost this week, we could have drawn. And the games we've drawn this season, we could have won. So you're gaining points there. We need to go out and get a proper number nine. Now, I'll give you a little bit of breaking news, guys. I have heard from my man on the ground and the ear on the ground that Tottenham have drawn up a four man shortlist for a striker and there is I think Vavovic is on there and Gimenez is on that list as well I don't know who the other two are but there is a four man shortlist so Tottenham are looking to address that area in the summer so look let's see where we go from there but I think get a number six in get covered them a little bit for the back four but we need a number nine You because you've got you got Johnson whipping them them balls against West Ham. If we had Harry Kane or a top striker in there, they would have been banging them in. Mm. You know that as well as I do. And I know. Oh, look, I, I tried warning about this in the summer. No one yeah. wanted to hear it. Yeah, and look, if we had a striker, and my man Johnson again, proven he's he's coming good. He's coming into his game. Mm. He had Werner down the other yes. wing. We need another striker, and that's where we need to. I think Sonny is a great captain for me. He's a leader by example. He's a leader of men. But he isn't our number nine. And we need to get a proper number nine. That's where we need to That's where we need to look in the summer. But there is a four-man shortlist. So Tottenham and Paratici is already cooking. He's already mm. got the ingredients in the pot. He's stirring the pot. And he's just going to pick out another great number nine. And we will be better off next season. So there you go. <laughs> Mm, mm, no, look, I, I really do hope so. I mean, Jack, I think I probably know where you stand on this. And I think if I'm correct, we've done a video on it the other day. Yeah. I don't know whether you want anything to add to it or move on. 
I could summarize quickly because I think we've done me member videos mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know, for this as well. So a lot of people would already know. I think we need a target man because a lot of people don't even seem to like Richarlison. So we still need, you know, a top target man and a top, you know, box uh, striker of some sort. And uh, whoever that may be this summer, you know, is, uh, you know, needs to fill in those shoes to be able to break down or be that guy that we can uh, help. Uh, beat those low block defenses mm. with you know someone who can rise above those de defenders have good hold up play to bring others into play just need a top uh yeah you know hold up play sort of striker mm. this uh summer another really good winger that can i think in sadly the future in a few years maybe replace Sonny in terms of his goal output in terms of his creativity mm. as well i don't think he'll ever you know this winger ever get to Sonny's level or even the output that he's ever had but we need someone who can fill mm. in those shoes and then likely contribute at the same time you know kind of fill out the front three on the right wing or on the left wing you know depending and hopefully can play both and then you look to probably bring in like a, a top Hoiberg replacement someone who's much better than Hoiberg that can either play the number six play the number eight or just really a top deep lying type of a uh, defensive midfielder and I think uh that would make a lot of sense as well and then there are other things I could say but that's just just way. just maybe a bit of a different question then for you jack look everyone knows the way we want to play right two direct ringers who like to attack the six yard box putting low crosses across the six yard box more or less for a tap in how many times have we seen that go rinse and repeat this season but for me i do think we are too one dimensional with what we currently have i do think we need more variety in that in that forward area i mean does you know where where do you think that comes from you know how do we do that with what we've got between now and the end of the season then how do we sort of continue to make different types of goals? Like, how do we invent different types of goals? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, everyone knows what we're trying to do, right? And mm -hmm. it's it, it's sort of, you know, it works a couple of times a game, but you'd argue, you know, we need more variety. When you look at the likes of Liverpool, for instance, right? They'll put crosses in, they'll put balls in from different angles, they'll take shots, they're constantly knocking on the door. And that's why they've scored the amount of goals they have this season, because they're just constantly battering it down. We're in, when we're in possession, we're very boring. It's one dimension. If we can't get Werner in behind the fullback or Johnson, we, we don't create anything. Yeah, I agree with that. I think we fall a bit into that problem that sometimes City could have had, you know, in a few seasons ago before they even got Holland or, you know, kind of a, a striker that could, you know, occupy the central areas where they did have to, to sort of resort to just kind of trying different things. And, you know, instead of just getting behind the fullback, like you say, and then just playing those sort of cutbacks that are really effective for them, they had to start doing different things. And I think for us, since we don't really have in this game that target man to whip in crosses to, mm -hmm. I'd like to see us take more shots in general. Like I know Pasacoglu mentioned that, that he says, you know, he's not taking away their license to shoot. I think if we did take more risks with some of the openings that we do get, if we fired mm -hmm. a shot on goal, you never know. A keeper is not always going to be able to catch it and then he could spill it or parry it to somebody else and danger and sort of, uh, you know, chaos can happen from there. And then mm -hmm. you could be able to create an easier goal or kind of an easier cutback or pass across the box to someone who can tap it in from there. It just seems like Spurs don't really take enough risks kind of uh, or mm -hmm. think enough for themselves where they maybe go against, you know, some of the patterns of play. Perhaps someone could when they're outside the area, look to maybe chip, you know, a, a through ball to somebody or look to actually just fire a shot on goal and see what sort of, you know, can happen from there. It just, mm -hmm. it does feel like we are a bit too predictable. I don't think that always then means that we need to just have a target man, Dave. It'd be ideal. I think it'd make it a lot easier for us, but we could see our players, I think, be just a bit more independent, a bit more decisive with uh, trying to maybe make a goal for themselves. And then from there, you might see someone else score. Look, I, I completely agree. When it comes to the target man, I think the way I look at it is, right, there's a reason why Man City went and got Haaland. Now, everyone makes it out that, you know, oh, you, they, you can play without a striker. Look what Pep done at City. People forget he tried to go for Harry Kane that summer and we refused to sell him. So he had no choice but to go with him and hold out for the next best, which was Haaland. Brought him in here. Why did they bring a big man in here? Well, interestingly enough, there's a new documentary about Man City released on Netflix, and it's explained there. They say it. We brought him in here because against all the teams that sit low block, you can't just constantly try intricate play and try and get through them. You know, they're becoming better. So what you have to do is start, you know, putting a big man in there and start putting the balls in the box and stuff like that. Also, is it any coincidence that, my, you know, Liverpool have gone away from the likes of Firmino and stuff like that and put Darren Nunes down the middle, a big guy that creates havoc and a lot of trouble? You know, these teams that are up there competing for trophies have gone a 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I've gone back to the old traditional big man up front, good guy up front. You know, he can hold up the ball and stuff like that. And for me, I do think that is where we need to uh, to get back to. There's a reason why they've done it. You know, they've realised that trying to play this intricate football all the time, it, it can be a struggle and sometimes doesn't yield all the results that you need. And they find it tougher and tougher and they've gone for big men. So for me, I do think maybe we need to get back to that. Um, just quickly, though, everyone, it's, I'm going to do a bit of housekeeping here. One hour and 15 in. I've got a lot of questions now on set pieces and uh, team selection heading into this game. So plenty of questions for you guys out there to get your uh, teeth stuck into and share your thoughts with us. Um, if you could, please make sure you smash that like button. If you're new, smash that subscribe button. Helps your boys out massively. And uh, don't be afraid to get your questions in for the panel as well, you know. Um, and you can do that via a number of ways. You can just put them in there and, uh, you know, we'll try our best to get to as many of them as we can. But if you want it to be guaranteed, you know, I can't do any fairer than that. You know, why not make it a super chat? It's a great way to support your boys as well. And we'll bring them up and answer them. Or... If you're feeling generous on this Sunday evening, why not gift out memberships or grab yourself one and become a part of the growing community here at the Irish Hotspur, which is ever growing and due to expand and become even bigger than you can imagine over the summer. That is the idea behind it. But getting on to it, me and W does say, play Hoiberg the last seven games, I will riot. Um, we'll start with you on this, Jack, and we'll work our way around because I know you, Dermot, and Alex probably uh, might want to have a say uh, to, to me on this one. So start with you, Jack. I actually at first really thought that Mia was saying play him in the in the next seven games or I will riot. And I actually <laughs> yeah, was wanting right. to make sure we could probably need to cancel the show and make sure Mia was okay, you know, and everything was all right, you know, <laughs> because normally, you know, we know how she feels. But it's good to know that she clarified it for me and she did mean that don't play him in the next seven games. To you know, as much as I love, you know, seeing a bit of a Sauceberg cameo, Dave. It's sort of like with Geo, like how like do we really need to start him or use him like unless it's you know completely desperate times or maybe we don't want to risk an injury with a certain player like if we're up you know by plenty of goals it mm. shouldn't really be the case that Hoybjerg should play a ton of minutes for the rest of the season as much as you and I would love that and as much as maybe some other Hoybjerg fans would love that we need to look at players who are here for the future who can develop and who can finish strong in the last season mm -hmm. right it's not really about Hoybjerg finishing strong it's really about players like Basuma, Saar, yeah. Bentoncourt, guys who are part of this future, part of this midfield. It's mm. about them finishing strong. And maybe even likely, uh, you would you would agree with me too, Dave. I mean, probably even more important than if we get like an opportunity for a younger player, if that, you know, chance does arrive, mm. you know, that would be even better to see you know, someone in the Tyrese Hall or I don't know, Abbott, right, plays deeper in the midfield too. He's gotten a chance in the past. There are plenty of guys who would deserve that even more so than, you know, our man, uh, Zinedine Sosberg. So uh, mm. I think Mia's unfortunately right. <laughs> look, I absolutely love Zinedine Sosberg. I think he is a good player and I think he does have plenty to offer. But when I look at it, I think he's in the same camp as Lo Celso. You know, they'll only ever really be reduced to minutes off the bench, they, you know, for the rest of this season because I don't think Postacoglu has plans with them heading into next season. And that's why you see him stick with players maybe that are going through bad patches because they're in his plans next season. Some of these other guys aren't. So, you know, as much as I like Koyberg and stuff like that, and I do think he does a great service this season coming off the bench and just bringing a bit of calmness, that little bit of experience experience to teams, maybe expand and play and stuff like that uh, later on in games. But um, sadly, I do think his time has, has come to an end. Now, I know Ellie's out there listening, so block your ears on the rest of this conversation, Ellie. We don't want to upset you. But uh, Dermot, I mean, do you agree with me here or do you, do you think we should be playing Hoiberg in there and giving him his opportunity? How no do I agree with Mia? Mia knows where I stand at this point. She knows I'm a big Hoybier fan. And Hoybier, I think, has done a good job when he's come in this season. He's been ever-present for us over the last couple of seasons. He's been a better player, mm. to be fair, compared to the most of the dross we were watching. He was one of the players who actually st was stood up and stood to be counted when yeah. the rest of the players were crying and hiding behind their behind their subs bench. So, mm. look, I'd be sad to see Hoybier go. I really will, because I think Hoybier has... He has done well. He has that passion. He has that pride to wear the shirt. I, I don't know why he gets so much heat and so much hate mm. from fans when he when he was when he, we wanted players to stand up. He stood up. He stood up to be counted. And he mm. has done a job when he's come on. He has done well. So look, he is going in the summer. I've been sad to see the Viking, the Viking warrior go. But thank you for your service. You've been a great player for Spurs and do you know what? I'd be sorry to see you go. But I think he should get a go in the last seven games. 
personally myself, but you know what? Not everyone's he's not everyone's cup of tea. Mm. But mm. for me, taking is right. He was the only player that he would die for the jersey. And there's only a few players we can say mm. on the Conte, on the Mourinho that would do that. He was one of them that people seem to forget mm. that. They just look at Hoybia. Oh, he's no crap. Let's hate on him. But he was one of the players that you could count on under them two mm. managers. Do you know? Mm. And then we're all praising Eric Dara and Ben Davis, really. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, that that's what I don't understand. That last part, you know, some of the mm. praise and adulation some of these other guys got compared to mm. to Hoiberg, who actually died for the jersey and didn't just speak about it in pretty in in little interviews with Football London and stuff like that. But um, Alex, I mean, where do you stand on on Pierre and Hoiberg? I didn't mention you bring him up earlier on in the show. Bye bye. Don't let the uh, door door uh, knock you uh, um, behind. That's all I can say. Because for me. <laughs> He's not good enough. I said it. Um, how many? I said it. Um, the, those lonely years that go to Jack and uh, and I said it to um, to Ellie. Big up Ellie, the Queen. Um, but for me, so I I, I I don't see the point. He wants to leave anyway. So we should have left in. He should have left in January. Um, the, the worry for me is that we're going to go for somebody that's uh, a below average M- um, uh, no, below average Henderson now in Gallagher from Chelsea now. Um, I'm hearing now, so um, we're going to get even more of a player now. Um, Will you so, have a party I mean, with uh, Kate and Mia are organizing a party when he goes in the chat? Will you attend? Um, I mean, I, I don't do parties like that, really. You know what I mean? Oh, that, that sounds really bad, me saying that, you know. Um, I, yeah, well, I, I, I try, I try, busy, I try to affirm yeah. myself. That's, if that sounds really bad, I do apologise to both of them. Um, <laughs> I, try, I, try, I, busy, uh, I just think it suits your character perfectly, the fact that you don't do parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, um, but, um, but, yeah, it's just, I don't know. And the Celsa one is a confusing one for me because a lot of Spurs fans, even though I've been at the same, I think he's... He's like the Argentinian Conton Carroll, the Celso. Honestly, he's just absolutely boring as hell. And I just think, I don't see it. I've been at the stadium, I watched him, and he, I just don't see it. Um, um, You know, and that's it. Yeah, me, I was only joking. I was only joking. Big up to you, Mia. Um, um, but yeah, it's just, um, I just, I don't know. Um, I, I, I I agree with you on this. I think I think at the moment because because they've been in so long, it's not really their fault, and I don't think it's really the Celso's fault. Really, it's just that it's just some oh, it's cer- some first and circumstances, isn't it? Because he came in for Pochettino, and he's just gone through such a dross time at Tottenham, and he's just been a scapegoat. I disagree I on that, Alex. Alex. Huh? I disagree. You know, we don't. We never made them excuses for the likes of Kane and Son. And what I'm yeah, getting true. at here, you, if you, your standards are at a level week in, week out, it doesn't matter what manager comes in here. You know, when, when Conte and Jose came in here, Kane and Son were still scoring goals. It yeah. didn't affect their game. No, no, no. I, no, I'm, I'm not. Dis- I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing mm. with you. I think he needs to go because he was twerking for a mer- mer- move to go to Aston Villa mm. last, like in the summer. So he's been twerking. Yeah, and he plays well for Argentina, so I'm not making that excuse. But a lot of Spurs fans are telling me that he's played well in certain games, like Aston Villa, like Man City. He was brilliant, they're saying. But for me, Kulu was better than him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I saw it more from Kulu than than um, the Celso, and I, d- I just don't get it. You know what I mean? I'm being at the stadium. I, 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 you know, what I mean, like I'm seeing with now, I've seen signs with Bentacor now. I've not seen it with the Celso. The only mm-hmm. time I saw it. Was that time against Liverpool back uh, back um, when um, Mourinho was in charge? Mm. That's a long time ago. Mm. You know what I mean? So, and Hoybier, yes, he does a good job, but I think he needs players to make him look good. You know what I mean? And I just think he doesn't fit the the way that we want to play. And I I've never really taken to him because I don't think he is that sort of player. You know what I mean? For mm. me, anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? So, I. It, you know, I, I just think I think the problem is at the moment. I think I can understand why he's angry though. The Celsa's angry and um, Oibier's angry because Madison and Basuma have not been playing well, and even Saar. Saar's had a good season. Mm. Yeah, so, I've seen it. He's Brilliant been good. Season. He's been very good. He's been one of our decent midfielders. But Madison and um, and uh, Basuma have not playing well at the moment. And let's be honest here, they should have been they should have been taken out of the team. But mm. it shows you what. 
Postacoglu thinks about Hoybier and the Celso because mm. he was picking them up in the summer. So, well, I, I, I think he, you know, he was going to do that because they're going to be part of his plans. Look, with yeah, Postacoglu, true. his main thing was come in here, eradicate all the bad eggs. He will not work with people that don't want to work with him. Look at the players that he had no interest in Endombele, Jed Spence, Eric Dyer, Hugo Lloris. You know, people who people may not like this, but you know, Dyer has been accused of being having, you know, maybe a bad attitude. Same as Hugo Lloris. Hugo Lloris quit on the team at half time and stuff like that. But he's got rid of all the bad eggs. Hoiberg, you know, it's been reported over the summer that he's first in, last leave every single day and stuff like that. He works like a professional. I, I'm presuming, you know, Postacoglu probably liked the Sasso character and that's why he's been kept around. He's kept them around for squad depth this season. This summer, they'll be shipped on. There'll be new guys brought in and I can, uh, I cannot wait to see the Sasso go. I think it sets a bad precedent to keep him around here. I think it's, it's you know, it's a culture of, 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 of area gone by. Well, but big up the owl. Addy says, hello boys. Hope we can score a few today. 3-1 to the Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Great to see Alex again. Now wind them right up. <laughs> Ah, look, hopefully we get a massive three one today. I would like to see, you know, it seems to be a very popular uh, score prediction today. A lot of people going for three one. Um, I just worry. I don't think it's going to be as easy as many people think it is. You know, they do play a low block similar to West Ham. If we go with that same front three that we did against West Ham, the warning signs are there. So uh, the only thing I would say is maybe not in the first aren't as tight defensively, so might give up a few more chances and hopefully we take them. But um, I don't think it, I think it's going to be a largely frustrating game today. Um. It but big up, uh, the old lad, Alex, be, anything you want to say to him? It will be, Dave. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted to say this because I've seen the same patterns whenever we play. We we either start well or we don't start well. Um, and then we have a period where the other team are, are getting into us. And then we mm. have a period when we'll score goals. Mm. And then after that, what happens afterwards? And that's it. You know what I mean? And I think that, that's been the same pattern I've seen Whenever I bet in the stadium, you know what I mean, mm. and that's when you see the fans getting a bit, mm, yeah, not liking it, mm, moaning, and it, it's just the same old patterns. And I think, it's, I think we're just a moments team at the moment. Mm. Again, I said it on Mr. Bot's Office TV again. If you watch one of my videos, I said it already. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, but yeah, it's just like you know, we do it in patches. We're a patches team. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that's where you even saw it against Aston Villa, even though people said that was the best performance. Mm. You saw the second half, boom, hit them where it hurts. And I think Aston Villa mm. just couldn't come back from that. And that was it. Mm. No, look, I agree with you. I do think we're a moments team. I sort of, you know, said, said that myself. I agree with that for sure. Donovan Oosterreicher says, Gio will score today. Uh, here's money to put a bet on it. I, I'm not putting any money on Gio to score whatsoever. Look. You know, I think a lot of people got hyped around these two appearances back when Madison was injured and they're getting hyped by a couple of his cameo appearances off the bench. If Postacoglu really had any faith in Giovanni Lacelso, he would have came in for Madison at some point by now and started the game. Uh, despite, you know, people in the press conferences trying their best to ask Postacoglu about Gio and potentially getting him in the starting lineup, Postacoglu ain't starting him. Um, look, I, I, I'll leave Jack in charge of that. Jack can put a sneaky two euro bet on Giovanni Lascelles. So I no. won't and I refuse to because I think he sets a bad precedent, a bad culture. I think there's too many excuses made for the guy. And um, we're getting into the winks category with this guy. What's his best position? This, that, and the other. For me, get him gone. So I'm not partaking in that because I want him gone. But I'll leave that to Jack. Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack <laughs> can put that on for you, Donovan. You're going to do it, Jacko? Definitely not. Uh, Donovan, but you've heard me. I've actually wanted and willingly wanted to sign the Lacelso apology forms this season. Dave, I think, was, you know, just waiting for him to really be proven wrong on him. But Lacelso hasn't even it given it a go. Like he hasn't even given it much of an effort at all to like make and I said I wanted to sign the apology forms and like he hasn't even <laughs> yeah. allowed me to whatsoever, like a willing participant, and I can't even do it. Um, and it's just because anytime that he puts in a few good games, he gets injured, and then he misses his opportunity to basically, yeah, solidify himself and solidify his future mm -hmm. with this club. It's just on repeat, and he's done it so many times, it's kind of ridiculous that he just mm -hmm. needs to go. And I don't even think when he does come on for like a tiny little cameo that he's so good that, you know, mm -hmm. he makes that great of an impact. I do think he's one of those players that needs a bit of a run of games as well in order to start mm -hmm. seeing the real benefit from him. So... Sadly, I just couldn't fill out the apology forms, Donovan. I pro you probably did too. You probably wanted to fill them out if you were one of those as well. I know you're a nice guy. Pick up Donovan. 
look, Jack tried his best to coerce me into it, but you know, I just sort of knew this would happen again with Gio, so I refused point blank, um, Donovan. But uh, look, if he comes on today and scores, I'll take it, and when he leaves, I'll say thank you very much. <laughs> Off you go. Uh, that's what I'll say, Donovan. Big yourself up. Uh, big up Chang as well. He also says, Come on, you Spurs. Uh, to Mr. Harris, Mr. Kanicki, Mr. Dermot, and Mr. Box Office. Big up, Chang. Really appreciate that, my man. Hopefully, this club turns up today and puts Forrest to the test. Uh, be absolutely brilliant. But big Chang up, a lady really is, is Chang a lady, I believe. Or Mr. Chang, sorry. Or Mr. Chang, sorry. Um, Never mind. I'm not, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. Never anyway, mind. moving on. Moving on. You can be what you want to be anyway. Uh, K32 says, hello, guys, from a blustery Ireland. We need to take advantage of Villa dropping points yesterday. I think we will win today 2-0. Come on, you Spurs. Johnson to do the job again today. Come on, the mighty Hotspur. Look, you know, he proved me wrong uh, uh, the other day, and he done very well against West Ham. Hopefully, we see the exact same again today. Now, guys, I've just got one question around the set pieces. We'll, we'll get quick answers on this. And I know uh, for the last half an hour, I want to move into the discussion about you know, the lineup and some questions about the midfield and that forward line on who we want to see today. Um, but Jack, we'll start with you on this one. I mean, or Dermot, we'll start with you on this one, my yeah. man. Spurs were undone at a set piece yet again uh, against West Ham. Spurs are not the tallest of sides, and Ange did say he does not want to work with a set piece coach. Um, when he when he sort of got rid of Gianni Vio, despite a growing chain trend in football of hiring mm. specialists in top flight football. Should Postacoglu reassess that decision? Because, you know, between Medina, mm. Yedinak and, and Mason, it's clearly not working. I, I think he should. I think he will. I think he will look at it in the summer and think, right, we need to change it here. Um, obviously, whatever they're doing isn't working. And the goals we can see against West Ham, that equaliser was terrible. Certainly by putting it politely and putting it without putting a load of swear words behind it. It was absolutely dreadful. Um, so I think he will look at it in the summer. I think he will change it. I think change is demanded. And Ange is not a fool. Ange will see, right, it isn't working. What do I do to improve it? And he will. And I think it's already in the works already. Don't don't be under any illusions. Ange is already putting together the pre-season work already on what we're going to do in the summer and his coaching staff as well. So look, let, let's see where it goes. But yes, Dave, he definitely does. We need, we should never yeah. have let the, um, the coaching, um, the setup coach under Conte. We should never let mm. him go. Mm. That mm. was a mistake by Ange. I think Ange will realise that and then he will, he will say, right, okay, we, we need mm. to improve. So yeah, he will do, Dave. Mm. Mm. And look, he's not averse to bringing in people. I remember at Celtic, he brought yeah. in Harry Kuehl to work with the wingers because they kept them going down at every bit of contact. Believe it or not, mm. he brought in Harry Kuehl to, you know, teach them how to ride that contact and sort of keep going and stuff like that. So, you know, he's not averse to it. Um, look, I would like to see something different. I mean, yeah. look, to be fair, set pieces is a big problem and long before maybe, you know, mm. um, Posta Coglu arrived. We were weak under them under Jose, same as Conte and stuff like that. I mean, Alex, where are you with this set piece stuff? I mean, it's a big bugbear of a lot of people's now. It's coming more, it's actually really coming to the fore since Mika Richards talked about on uh, Match of the Day. But realistically, some Spurs fans like myself have been speaking about it for quite some time long before that. Um, you know, how, how, how do we get to grits with defending these set pieces more, you know, a lot better than maybe what we currently do? I agree with Dermot to a point that uh, Postal Google would be planning this in, in the in the summer. I do agree with that. Um he might do it. Um I'm not like I said, I'm not concerned too much because I think defenders will learn. I think I, I do think they're gonna have a difficult season next season, but I think they will learn if they're competent enough. I, I, I just mm -hmm. I just focus more on the attack because we're gonna let in goals regardless anyway. Because we're attacking team, he wants to take risks. I mm. think he will have to bring somebody in because in a cup final, or you know, an important game that is like you know trying to get into like these these cups or something or trophies mm. or European, um, it, you know, because we're likely to be in Champions League this this season next season. It's important because that might be the case where you you know we have one chance and. Um, they they take a chance from a set piece and you know the set piece undoes does does us and then we're out mm. the competition. So you know he wants to win. So yeah, he might have to look into that um, in the summer. Definitely. Now, mm. no, 
You know what I mean? I think it's more our attack that need to really improve. You know, I mean, that's that's the problem at the moment. You know, mm. um, it would obviously be a problem if we were getting thrashed every single week. You know what I mean? Mm. Yes, and we were like, releg- but we're not get- mm. we're not relegation candidates, are we? You know, we're 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 where we are at the moment, and we've had problems with set pieces. Mm. So it it's quite obvious where the the problem lies, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. You know. Um, Man City, if Tottenham Hotspur were better in attack and tried to actually cause problems for Man City and scored our goals, that set piece that they scored in the FA Cup, uh, FA Cup, whatever, fourth round, would yeah. not matter. Mm. You know what I mean? If we've taken not our chance happened. to get Aston Villa, we would have won the game mm-hmm. and I, 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 at home because we played well in that game. I was there and I said it myself. Yeah? yeah like Chelsea. Mm. If we taken our chance against Chelsea when we got beaten, mm. when we got beaten for one, mm. which I thought we were actually very, very good. Again, I clapped them. I was there again. Mm. We were no problem because Chelsea were absolutely useless up front. Yeah, mm. absolutely useless. That Mr. Bots office saying that, by the way, who criticised my team even when we win. Mm. So, mm. you know, it's like, so for me, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, we do need to sort it out. Yes, 100%. But it's that attack. I'm sorry. I, I can't, I, I, I have to emphasize it's that attack. Mm. And that's it. Yes, no, I, we do need better defenders. Mm. Yes, to compete with those defenders. Yes, that's a good because Van der Ven will get injured next season. Mm. Unfortunately, that's the reality, and we can't rely on those fullbacks all the time. Because I'm sorry, mm. that, that that can't continue. That cannot mm. continue, right? But mm. that, but um, the attack and that midfield do need to improve. Because if we have a better better number six, that could be Romero, could be mm. Romero. I'm not impugned to that because we had Dyer in, in midfield and someone's told me, big up to Marlon on the Spurs Kings TV, I don't want to mention, but I'm bigging him up very good because I, lo- I love their channel, yeah, is that, it, you know, Romero might be a great, great person to put in that midfield. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, and he, he said Dyer was better in midfield, I'd rather die in midfield than bloody um, Skip. So what does that say mm. to you? Mm. So I'm just giving you scenarios, that's it. You know what I mean? No, no, look, I, I do get the point you're taking. You know, if we were more potent in attack, maybe, you know, these set pieces wouldn't be as much of a, you know, highlighted or as much of a, you know, a conversation. I, I, do, I do get the general point you're trying to make there. And I, I sort of agree with it, but I'd also argue, you know, we do need to tighten up from set pieces. I mean, Jack, you've got Brian Timlin's uh, comment uh, start here. So I presume you're probably going to lead yeah. off with this. But I'd also ask you as well off the back off, you know, the back of what I've asked the guys, do we take enough from attacking set pieces? You look at Arsenal, how high they are up in the rankings uh, with the amount of goals they score from them. Same with Man City, these top clubs, they sort of have all areas covered, right? Yeah, it feels like. Arsenal have just all of a sudden turned into West Ham, like on steroids, you know, basically from set pieces, really. And um, I'd like to be a similar team where we could feel like, you know, from corners, we have a really good chance of, you know, at least uh, making something happen. It doesn't have to be, you know, like a shot on goal every time, but at least we're causing them lots of problems, making them scared of us, you know, when we do have a set piece. Feels like this season, it's been very random and I don't think it's really been that great, you know, from us, you know, going forward. I think it's kind of been relied more on sort of individual quality. It doesn't seem like we have much of a routine, or at least maybe I'm too dumb to be able to tell what we're actually doing. But it does seem, you know, not as not as intricate or not as obvious as what it was under Gianni Vio. Under Gianni Vio, you could really tell like certain schemes and certain types of tactics from it. If I'm not mistaken, Ryan Mason, I think, is part of the set yeah. piece uh, coaching and. I think he's done actually an okay job, not a great job, but he's done an okay job defensively. And uh, I would agree with actually Brian Timlin's point that it really seems like it's more the volume of corners that we're conceding does lead to then, you know, more goals from corners being conceded. Um, But in, in that West Ham game, I thought we defended almost every single one of them pretty well, other than that one that we did end up conceding. And we did, we were atrocious on that one, but it feels like, it's it's a mixed bag for us defensively. We could do definitely a lot better going forward and in, uh, in attacking set pieces for sure. And uh, I wish we were better in that department. Maybe it's the one area of improvement for uh, for Romero for uh, Mickey Van de Ven. Romero's improved dramatically, I think, in his yeah, aerial yeah. game. A lot better in his aerial game this season. But he could still have improvement. I think. I don't think he's by any means still a great threat. 
Uh, and Mickey Van de Ven, you know, despite how much we wax lyrical about him, I don't think of him as usually a great aerial threat. I think mm. he usually prefers the game to be played on the floor, on the ground. That way he can sort of bully you and use his, uh, you know, kind of defending genius, but also his physical advantage over you. Mm. But in the air, doesn't really win too many commanding headers and haven't even seen him mm. from attacking set pieces be much of a threat either. So I'd mm. say probably an area where they could improve. No, look, for me, I think, you know, I would like to improve defensively and going forward. You know, you know, you look at Arsenal and stuff this season, you know, the reason why they're putting teams to bed in the manner that they are is because, you know, they create a lot going forward, but they also take advantage of set pieces. I think they've scored the most goals from set pieces this season or something like that. So, you know, it's telling in itself, it, you know, you've got to perfect more, most areas of the game and you do them things right. It, it, you know, it's usually enough to sort of put you in a title challenge and sort of maintain that pace and stuff like that. So I do think it's areas that we definitely need to work on. Uh, but look, guys, I want to I want to go straight into midfield. I think the back line under Conte and the goalkeeper is pretty much settled. No point of wasting any time really speaking about that. But what I do want to know a few guys out there, so let me know your comments in the comment section below. And then, what were your thoughts on the midfield combination of Basuma, Bentecourt and Madison um, against West Ham? For me, I actually thought Basuma was brilliant. I thought Bentecourt was brilliant, which I was surprised to see a lot of publications this week doing their predicted lineup suggesting that he was only okay. And, you know, I thought he was much better than okay. I think it's been harsh. And a lot of them have sort of dropped Bentico for Papa Matasar um, with Madison uh, sort of retaining his lineup and all. So I want to know what sort of midfield combination people want to see today and why. Um, so we'll start on you with, with you on this one, Dermo. Uh, for me, Dave, I would have I'd go back to the original Basuma Sar and Madison. Look, right. Bentacor did Bentacor did all right on against West Ham. He did play well. That midfoot three did work. But I just feel Papa Sar offers you something different and offers you a bit more. And we did miss him, I think. Um we did miss him about. So that's why I've gone for that middle three, because I think it works. Mm. They complement one another. And as much as Bentacord did well, and look, I agree with Alex, Bentacord is a top player. He is a good player and he has, he, he is a player that you will want in your team. I just feel Basuma and Papa Sar work well together with Madison. Mm. It links up better. So that's why I've gone for three. And I went for that three in my predicted lineup as well. Um, Interesting. Well, I, I, I toyed with that. When I did the midfield, it took me, it took me a good half an hour because I toyed with three different combinations. Mm. And none of them sat right with me until I put Basuma and Sart and Madison. It fits for me. It they mm. just fit, they work well together. They've proved they've worked well this season. Mm. So that's why I've gone for them three. But Basuma uh, um, Bentacle did play well against West Ham. You, you can't say he did it because he did, and mm. it did work. But I just feel you need to go back to the original three, in my opinion. That's why I went with it. Mm. Do you know what? For my midfield tree, I was toying up actually dropping Madison and bringing Bentecourt in and putting Bentecourt and Sar together uh, because Madison is really pissing me off of that. I think he's hiding completely. I, at one point, 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 Dave, I actually point. did put Son in that number 10 role and drop Madison. I did toy with mm. that idea. Mm. Now, mm. I wish I went with it because I think that is a three that could work as well. Put Sonny in that 10 role. Mm. I think he he's suited to that role now because I don't mm. think he's got the pace as a winger. So I think as a number 10, and the way he plays, that would suit him. Mm. But look, for, for me, I just stick with the original three. Madison will come good because he's got the European Championships coming up. Mm. He's going to want to show I'm good enough for, for Gareth Southgate to pick me. But we keep saying this, though, Dermot, for weeks, yeah. and he still hasn't turned up. I mean, they're against West Ham, right? Mm. He popped two balls over the fullback's head onto Brennan Johnson's feet. He and he thought he was shit hot. I mean, I watch Modric do that about 50 times a game. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's that sort of flair and yeah. that sort of thing that we're missing. And everyone keeps saying this about Madison. But for me, I think his form's actually becoming a bit of a concern. Someone said it last week. Is he holding himself back for the Euros? By doing that, he might not even bloody make the Euros. No, uh, for, for me, Madison is the biggest frustrating this season. He started mm. the season brilliantly. And then since he got injured, he hasn't been the same player since he came back for whatever reason. Um, but he, he's been my biggest frustrating. And that's why I say put Kulu in there or even try Sonny in there. We need mm. somebody to, to keep Madison on his toes. Because he thinks he's the only cam, I don't have to try as hard because I am going to be picked every week. You get somebody mm. else in that position, that will push him. You may get the best out of Madison. So maybe that's the way to go. But for me, I, look, 
it's I picked the three. The three is what I picked. But if you want to change it, mm. put Sonny in the number ten. Can't can't do any wrong. Mm. Mm. Look, you know, I've sort of toyed with that idea myself, getting him running mm. at the low block if people want to play him central and stuff like that. But ultimately, I just he just does not have the physicality to play no. in that role whatsoever, in my opinion. But I do, I do understand what you're saying. But Jack, I mean, where are you at with with, with the midfield tree? You know, J James Madison frustrating again the other night, taking off twice in the last two games early when Spurs were searching for goals and stuff like that. Uh, ben Bentecourt was chose to start over Saren. You know, you'd maybe think Postacoglu was proven right in that decision. I mean, where are you at with this midfield today? Who keeps their spot? Who doesn't? I think they kind of all keep their spot for me. I think... Same midfield. Basuma, but yeah, same midfield. I think uh, Basuma, in your opinion, maybe if you ever get a chance, Dave, you really thought, like, when watching back the game, that he was exceptional. You said that yeah. uh, to me, and I think you might have said that to the members as well, that he actually really stood out uh, amongst the amongst the, uh, amongst the the midfielders and kind of did all the right things that he's supposed to do in that position where he defensively sound, you know, uh, was able to mop up any sort of danger, was able to anticipate any type of danger, then also got the ball into the feet of Bentecourt and Madison in good areas, right? Like he wasn't just, you know, giving it to them just six yards away from him. You know, he was able to fire the ball into them so that mm -hmm. then, you know, some moves could be made. And I think you just said he had an all around very sound game. Bentagor, I thought probably might have been the best out of all of them. He just was able to create. He was starting moves. He was, uh, you know, finishing moves in the way that he also ended up going into the box. He was just a terrific box to box presence. And I think he has those tricky feet, right? When he is confident in himself, like his first touch and second touch, third touch is just ridiculous at times yeah. with how he can just take it past a player with ease. And he was really starting moves for us. And, I think he showed he offers something slightly different to Sar. He has experience. The way he plays, the way he carries himself as a guy that plays with mm. a lot of experience. But also he does have that really close control that I'd say Sar, you know, by no means ever has a bad touch, but he, he does have that really close control about him, mm. uh, Bentecourt, that we can take advantage of. And Madison, I agree with everything when it comes to putting pressure on him and when it comes to, yeah, like continuing to hold him to a higher standard. But that was one of his best games in the last few pretty average, if not below average games, I think, from him. So I'd continue with him again because I thought he was really good, actually, in the last in the last period. I understand, Dave, you could still say he could have been a little bit better. I just think in the grand scheme of the last three or four games of his, that was much better than what we were used to. So that's why I'd continue with him again. No, look, I agree with you in terms of, you know, he, he did actually do well on the ball. But again, for me, when I went back and looked at the game, I thought he'd done it very similar to Bentecor in a deeper role rather than in that final third, which is where I really want him to be. But I do take your point that he did have a good game in terms of getting that ball into the front line and stuff like that. Um, just quickly, Jack, John uh, uh, Salvage here says, and then we'll get Alex's thoughts on the midfield. Madison is not the problem. The problem is not having the quality players around him who's on his level. Just uh, duds like Basuma. I mean, I may I make that case for Son at this moment in time that no one's on his level. Could it be the same for Madison, do you think? I don't know. Like Bentecourt, if you're really gonna throw him that far under the bus, that'd be I think pretty harsh on Bentecourt. I think as well, you know, when it comes to players on, like I think Basuma has shown to be a terrific midfielder this season. I think I've also had criticism of Basuma. I don't think he's a dud by any means. And at some stage or another, during his time at Brighton, he was considered one of the best midfielders in the Premier League, really, or at least a, a top four level midfielder. And um, I think we could still have conversations about whether he's actually fit enough to be the starting midfielder week in, week out. But he's not a dud. I think maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the way you phrased it there, John. I think it's a, a little harsh, I think, on some of them, at least for me. But Madison, if he really were as good as you say, I think he would be putting up much better numbers than what he has. Uh, this season so far, I think he'd be putting up much better numbers. Look, that's he'd where he'd be I'm putting sorry. up Cole Palmer level numbers, and I hate to use that guy as an example. He'd be putting up Cole Palmer level numbers if he really was that good. <laughs> look, that's sort of where I'm at with it. You look at you know Cole Palmer, Matt, uh, Bellingham, you know Phil Ford, and look how week in week out they affect games and stuff like that. They very rarely have games where you don't see them show up and affect the game in some sort of manner. You look at Madison. You know, he's tasked with bringing that creativity. I, I, look, I'm going to have a bit of a hot take here just quickly. I see a lot of discussion around the midfield this season. Has it been perfect all season? No. Has it took them time to get used to the Coglu system? Yes. But 
I think the midfield take up a lot of flat for what the forwards don't do in terms of creativity and stuff. I'd actually yeah. argue the midfield has done their job this season, getting us into the final third, camping in there in large periods of games, you know, helping us dominate possession. But I feel like when the ball goes there, into the final third, and they're looking for people to make it happen. It almost comes back, and they're looking for others. They're looking for the midfield then to take on that onus and responsibility. And I don't think they are being helped by the four nine in that regard. And I think they do get a bit of a bit too much flat when it comes to it. Don't get me wrong; I do get frustrated with the creativity. But none of our forwards are exactly on blistering form right now, are they? So, you know, for me, I, I do think they get a bit of a hard slap when it comes to that. I do think the forwards could be a lot better. But I also would argue that James Madison needs to start dictating games more, a hell of a lot more. No point in showing, you know, coming for the ball. Harry Winks used to do that. Uh, you know, everyone used to tell me he's an England player. I said, keep doing that. You won't be long in the England squad. And look what happened there. You know, so it's the same with James Madison. You know, stop getting the ball, giving it back, looking looking pretty and jogging off. You know, get on the ball and do something with a bit of purpose. Like great players that have won, worn this Tottenham jersey in years gone by. Van der Vaart, Ginola, you know, Modric, people like that in the midfield where they used to, you know, wingers and that used to get on the ball, be direct and make stuff happen. And that's the, that's the, that, that's the, the level I hold Madison to until I see that. I'm going to keep holding them to that level whether it's right or wrong, uh, because that's what Pick I think John. makes a good attacking uh, midfielder. But Alex, uh, just quickly, actually, I believe Liverpool have gone one up, so that suits Tottenham Hotspur fans absolutely brilliantly when it comes to Arsenal not winning the Premier League. Uh, that's absolutely and huge. Man United, who I guess Man United already knocked themselves out of chasing oh, us. But, you know, more losses for them, the better, yeah. I think, as well. Yeah, I think Expression said it perfectly on um, the show that he does with Robbie, uh, best of frenemies or whatever it's called, enemies. Um, where he said the only chance Man United have of playing European football is on Ted Lasso next season. So, um, you know, <laughs> uh, hopefully, you know, Champions League football. So hopefully that is the case there. But I mean, Alex, where are you at with this midfield? Uh, you know, who do you want to see out there today? Um, first, I need to speak about Madison because if I'm going to criticise Son as a captain, where have you been, bro? He's vice where captain. Where have you been, bro? Madison as a as a vice captain. Honestly, um, I think someone said it, and I don't agree with that person. I'm not going to say his name, but he he said about three players, Basuma, Madison, and Richarlison. We'll see what they're going to be doing next season. Madison, well, he's had previous, because we see what he's like at Leicester, didn't we? And if we look at a player that's playing today, um, he's playing for Manchester United, who had a very good pit patch his first mm. season, Fernandes. And we don't look at him. We look at him now. He, he moans a lot. What's the difference between him and Fernandez at the moment? Not a lot. Not a lot. That's the that's the answer. Not the not a lot. Mm. So for me, again, like as the thing is though, I wanted this guy because this guy absolutely fascinated me when he was at Leicester. And he was absolutely fantastic the first ten games. Yes. Yeah. But since he's been injured, Leicester City fans were warning us about this. Mm. They were warning us about this guy. Now, he's going to stay, but he's the, he needs to start, really start making himself known now. Yeah. Honestly, because um, there, there are some worries there. You know what I mean? That's why I look at Bentacor and I see, I see Bentacor and you compare him to Madison at the moment, I know who I want him as my leader. And it's not Madison. It's not mm. Madison. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Mopay saw him coming when we were playing Brighton. He saw him coming because when he made that so, so, did that celebration, that arrow, he knew what he was trying to do. He knew how he'd get to him. And I could see it. I saw it. And I knew what he, he, he knew. He was biting the chops at it straight away. So he's going to have to man up a little bit. I've got to be mm. honest. You know what I mean? Um, if I, if I'm going to answer the question with uh, my, my midfield at the moment, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a devil's advocate because that's a popular word now these days. Devil's advocate now because everyone's <laughs> jumps at it now. Um, um, you know what show I'm talking about here, it's Dave, isn't it? You know I'm what I mean? taking it. I'm the best. I'm the best one on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, it's a great yeah, show. The, the, I absolutely love it. Yeah. The, the, um, the, if I'm putting my midfield at the moment, it's not going to happen. The Celso, oh. Bentacore. And Saar, that's my midfield. Because as far as I'm concerned, Basuma needs to get a bit, bit of a kick up the backside. Madison needs a timeout, a timeout the team. 
and the Celso needs to make himself known and needs to sh- see what I've been uh, told that he's a great How player. How long are we going to give him the Celso to make himself known? Though? What are we in? I know, I know, I know, Dave, 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 Dave. I, I'm being a bit of a hypocrite here, but I, I, at the end yeah. of the day, sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you've got to you've got to give a little bit of an olive branch. You know what I mean? The player that is really disappointing me, that really didn't really take his chance, and he's he's had he's got a chance now to make himself known in the centre, even though he plays well for Sweden, I'm told, um, in the centre. It's Kulazeski. He came on against West Ham. He was absolutely useless. You know, Madison came off. Yeah, this is your moment. This is your moment to be at the bright lights of, of the Oscars. And you turned into like you might as well just been at the, the parade. You know what I mean? Honestly, you know what what is going on? You know what I mean? Yeah. You didn't show yourself whatsoever. He's yeah. the man that is disappointing me the most. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I said before, what you saw with Gareth Bell, he came in. Yeah, he played badly for the last how many years? Yeah, he was really <laughs> gonna get cast guided out of the team. Yeah, we had Crunchyar, who was our left midfielder. He got injured. Yeah, Barrett Bell comes into the team, makes himself known. Get Crunchyroll's out of the team and he gets sold off. That's what you do. You make yourself known. That's the thing. Yeah, this is why I call it a bang average league. Yeah, a bang average league for a reason, for skill. Yeah, you need to go and watch the Italian league and Spanish league for a reason because you get skill. Entertainment, brilliant. Yeah, but there are players out there that are not good enough at the moment. Foden's not one of them because I'll tell you that. I had doubts about Foden. He's made a fall out of me this season. He's made a fall out of me this season. He's made himself known right now. That's what you do. That's what you do. You make yourself known. Knock yourself out the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, show you how, how you do it. Like the pe- people back in the nineties, and that's it. Sorry, I had to unleash that, that day, but you know how no. you get with Mr. Box Office. Back to you, Dave. I'm done. If you don't know, get can, to know. Can I just say very quickly? <laughs> did anyone see Sonny's reaction to Kulu after the West Ham game? Oh, and do you how- know? Did do you know what? I I think that showed a lot how frustrated Sonny is with Kulu as well. Actually, mm. do you know? Do you I, know what? I, I was glad to see yeah. that. Do, do you know what? I I hear you when it comes to that reaction, but you know people are praising it like it's something to get behind. Do it on the pitch. I'm you know, not don't show me frustrations in that after patch. Yeah. He done an interview after the Fulham game, and everyone was praising them for it and stuff like that. It's too late. Way too late. You know, do something on the pitch to prove it. You know, stop stop doing this in the press after games. It's what Hugo Reese used to do. It's what Eric Dyer and that used to do. You know, give these PE interviews after game and the, the, the buzzwords, oh, I'm not happy, we go again, we need to do better, this, that and the other. Well, then do it. You know, I'm sick of all this. In the, in, in, Carl, you know, will shout at sure. them, Dave. I literally huh? see him on the on the, on the pitch I, and he's, yeah. he's, he's saying, he's saying if, 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 if Emerson, he's like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Mm. I'm seeing this from Vicario, and he's only been in five minutes. I he's only the, been in five minutes. I was at the Brighton game, and we we where we were sat in, in um, the north stand. I was right behind Vicario. He mm. never shuts up for the whole game. Mm. He does not shut, and that's what you need. You need your mm. captain during the game to motivate, to criticize, to to have a go at players. Mm. I've got no problem what Son did afterwards. I do agree with you, Dave. He needs to do it on the pitch. I have no problem seeing what I see afterwards mm. and his reaction. I've got no problem with that. I'm not praising him. I just mm. haven't got a problem with it. I think no, look, I, I know you're not, but it's something that's hurt me this week. You know, I've seen a lot of people, that's my captain. Mm. That's the reaction I want. I'm like, well, do that in the game when, when the player can actually, you know, take mm. it on board and try and fix up. You know, do it in the game, not after the game. And that, I've maintained that all along since I've started YouTube and I ain't going to change on that, you know, with no. these guys. Don't show me all this fake shit after the game. Do it in the game where people actually have a chance to respond um, and stuff like that. But Jason glad Bellis, a, you, glad Dave isn't a man United fan because he would absolutely uh, hate those apologies after games. I'd be, go, I'd be going mad. They're, they're where we are, where we've had long club servants who are basically taking the piss out of the football <laughs> club. You know, I feel sorry for them in a regard. But um, yeah, I would be. Uh, honestly, I, I don't think I'd be a United fan any longer watching some of their <laughs> attitudes on the pitch if I was a United fan. Although, um, apologies. Just right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, I'd probably be barred off social media. I wouldn't be able to take it. Um, uh, Jason Bell has gifted out five Irish Hotspur memberships. Futures Bright, Futures Lily White, The Diddler, uh, Rob Frank, uh, Hula Hula, 
and Sammy Palgrim have been the beneficiaries beneficiaries of that. So make sure, please, you thank Jason Bell for his generosity. Make sure you get your teeth stuck in, stuck sunk into uh, the members only content and um, participate up, in some of the members fan shows and that that we have as well. So big up Jason Bell and really, really generous. appreciate the support. But guys, we are going into the last question of the evening, um, and it is to do with that front line again. Give me all your thoughts in the comments below and we will bring them up as we go on um, if you do want to support the show you have enjoyed it today feel free to get that done before we end off if you want uh, not not put pressure on anybody it's completely optional if you have enjoyed it and make sure you do subscribe to these guys channels as well THFC till I die and Mr Box Office TV we'll give them a chance at the end to plug it uh, but big up Jason bet on that but guys Last question, you know, I sort of had different questions about the forward area, but we don't have time to go into them each individually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my forward line heading into today's game. And then, you know, you can sort of, you know, give your thoughts on it and stuff. Look, heading into the West Ham game, I sort of alluded that Son, you know, would have the game that he would have, he ended up having because of the low block and stuff like that. Nottingham Forest are going to play the exact same way. When you want some playing down the middle is when you've got teams that are ready to play the high line so you can actually get some bearing down on goal one-on-one. -on -one. When you play against low block, Son has to play with his back to goal, and that is his weakest attribute. He cannot do that. West Ham, and everyone knows, as soon as Son gets his ball back to goal, go and put pressure on him and dishevel that ball. What they don't want is Son running at them. That's where he puts fear into them. So for me, I'm going to stand by what I've said all season long. Put Sonny back out on the left-hand side where he can actually affect games against low-block teams, where he can actually run at them rather than play with his back to it because you're not going to do anything with his back to it. He's absolutely wasted up there against low-block teams. We couldn't even get Son a sight of goal last week, the other night against West Ham. So for me, I don't want to see him through the middle. I want to see him on the left. On the right-hand side, I am going to reward Brennan Johnson. I thought he was superb against West Ham. So, I, you know, I'm slowly starting to change my opinion on him. I'm starting to maybe vibe with him a little. So I think he deserves it. And up front, controversial. I know Pasta Coglu doesn't have many options available to him. But I am going to go with Dejan Kulazeski. For me, what you need up front against a low-block team is a guy that sits there that can play with his back to goal and be able to hold up the ball, hold off a couple of defenders and bring others into play. You also need an option to be able to cross the ball rather than having to score the perfect goal and try and play through them. So he he gives you that option. And people that may think I'm crazy, let's not forget, against Luton, when Basuma got sent off earlier on the season, he played that lone striker role to absolute perfection, holding up the ball, getting us up the pitch, you know, and stuff like that. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Kulu himself speaks about wanting to play down the middle and stuff like that. I know he's probably more speaking in a cam role. But for me, that striker up there, it's more or less a sac you sacrifice that position today. It's a discipline role. When I look back at the last two games that we played against Nottingham Forest, I think it was Harry Kane last year that opened the scoring with a header, and Richardson earlier on in the season that opened the scoring with a header. So for me, you know, in order to maybe, you know, make Forest come out a little bit and stuff like that, you are going to have to break them down, put balls in the box, and hopefully have someone in there to go and attack it. So on that basis, that's my front three. So we'll start with you on this, Jack, and we'll work our way around the panel, and then we'll let you guys plug your stuff. Totally agree with you with uh, trying something different with Kulisevsky as the striker through the middle. I actually really like that idea. I think it's definitely worth a try. Um, so I don't think I need to explain it any differently than you, Dave. If that doesn't happen, though, and Kulusevsky isn't played through the middle, I think Sonny is probably better than Werner or Johnson uh, yeah. at striker, sadly. So we're going to have to just deal with it. And I told all the members, uh, as I told you, Sonny could have an easier time. Not saying it's still going to be mm -hmm. ideal for him. It's not going to be ideal, but he could have an easier time against Forrest than he did against West Ham, just because that Forest defense, I think, makes a lot more mistakes, and they just seem to just give you more chances, kind of that perhaps you don't even deserve sometimes. And Sonny, if you do give him, you know, just an easy, you know, shot at goal, like he's going to mm -hmm. bury it. So that's what I hope comes his way today. Or he just has a better game with his hold-up play. I agree with you. His hold-up play is by no means his best attribute, probably his weakest attribute. It's just against mm -hmm. West Ham, it really was his weak attribute because you could tell he kind of lost the confidence of himself. Mm -hmm in sort of holding it up and today's a new day today's a new game maybe he can have a bit more confidence in himself in his hold up play today 
Mm, mm, no, for sure. Look, I really do hope so. Uh, you know, because it is getting to the point. I think Kulazeski has to maybe rediscover himself, refine himself. So, you know, for me, I don't think it would be a bad option considering we are playing up against the low block. Uh, but everyone knows mine and Jack's position. It's all about freeing up Sonny where he can actually affect the game. And uh, that's why we sort of are, are maybe sticking to this. But um, box office will go to you this time. I, I mean, what do you want to see in the uh, forward area in that regard today? You moaned about agree. it all stream. I agree with you. So uh, what do you want to see? No, no, I agree with you what you're saying about Kulu, but he needs to want it. He needs to want it. Like, he's had the whole mm-hmm. season. He's had the whole season. I actually agree with you. Like, play him in the middle. Like, but he's, I mean, even like Havertz. You see Havertz, at least he's making mm-hmm. himself known. You might not rate him. I and mean, we need to see a long-term view, but... And he might win the championship season. We have to see what he does next season because he needs to improve next season. But, mm. I mean, he's not showing himself. That's the thing. It, 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 this is the best opportunity for him to be up front anyway because, I mean, I, I think forwards are, have gone downhill th- this era. I think they're better back in the day. Definitely yeah, back in the day. I but agree. but for me, just like, you know, this is an opportunity for him because I do agree with you. Some might be better on the left anyway. You know what I mean? So then you're competing with Richarlison. And I'm not being funny. Richarlison is no quality striker. You know what I mean? I'll see him tomorrow. So, sorry, Dave. Sorry, Jack. Sorry, Jack. But the (laughs) point is there... He loves Yeah, because he loves Richarlison. I know, because I I remember when I was sitting next to him, he absolutely loved him. He absolutely loved him. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Um, But it's just like, you know, it's just like, for me, just like, well, just to answer the question, because uh, people compare that answer questions, I'll just have the same front three. Son, Werner, and um, Johnson by default, right? By default, right? just to qualify it. But for me, Kulazeski has got a good opportunity in the next seven games to just show that he can at least compete to try and be in that front lead, to just do something. You know what I mean? Just to mm. like, because he's got the attributes, he can hold up the ball. And he doesn't need to be so pacey around around the pace as well because he can use his strength and he he can have a shot on him as well. Mm. So, I mean, it's just him at the moment. For me, that for him really, that that that's my problem at the moment. Um, yeah. So yeah, just my answer is my front three. I mean, I, we'll see what this this Swedish wonder kid does next season. Oh, but, you know, I'm not... It's a huge ask. Breath. I think anyone hoping to this to, for this kid to come in and rip it up. Look, I'm not going to say he can't, but it's a huge ask to make that step from the Swedish League to the Premier League and have that instant impact like that. Yeah, huge, yeah, no, huge. no, you're right, you're right. And I mean, you know, it's... It, I, but, yeah, just to, to answer the question, it's that front three, but I think I do agree with you, um, David. Kulazeski should be trying to put some in roles to try and do something because I think that, mm. I think I do agree with you he should be he, he could work as a as a, a forward mm. as in, in that forward line because he can I think he can work really well but he just needs to want it mm. you know and, no and, I agree and, I, I know what you mean by, by, by wanting like that West Ham yeah. cameo was just so disappointing yeah so disappointing he just did mm. absolutely nothing do you know what? For me, that 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 final that final pass that you're alluding to showed me a lack of confidence. He was sort of in two minds: will I do it? Will I not do it? And in the end, he just panicked. You know, sort of. That's not what you need in them final areas. You need you need a cool head like Sonny. You know, and they say this about the great players: the most devastating in the final third, when everything else is moving around them 100 miles per hour. You know. In, in their sort of mind, everything's moving very, very slowly and they can sort of pick things off and stuff like that. Um, and, and and for me, I, I do get what you mean when it comes to colours. Well, that's what we'll talk about swag. Swag. You know, mm. swag and arrogance. Mm. You know? The top players have got swag and arrogance. Yeah. Abramovic, um, Harry Kane, Teddy Sheringham, Andy Cole, Dwight mm. York, all these players. Harland, even though he's the brother of strong career, which I've been proven right again. Yeah, um, without the goals, by the way, without the goals. Um, mm. but you know, it's just like you know, it's just like you know, it's just you know, this is the thing. It's just like he's got the he's got the ability. He has got the ability. He's shown it. Look at the mm. stats. You know, what I mean, look at the stats. Which is why I don't behave on stats. He's got. He's the best assister. Mm. He gets in the right positions. You know what I mean? But it's just yeah. that. He just doesn't make the right decisions. And it's just like, how many times? And if you want to be the best, 
you've got to be the best. You know what I mean? So yeah. you, 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 you've got to do it. It's just so frustrating. I understand mm. why Son's frustrated. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Because, mm. like, I'm, I'm sorry, Bentacourt has been the best signing out of the yeah. two. Let's be honest. Yeah. And he's no, been we'll injured. Have, we'll have to have you back on and have more conversations about that forward line because I have a controversial take. I'm going to say it, but we're not getting into it today because I do have to end off and get over to We Are Tottenham TV after Derma answers. But, um, I'd argue no one's numbers across the same uh, across the front line is because Harry Kane's not there. You know, that's what it's affected Kulu massively, you know, and stuff like that. It's affected Sun to a degree off the left-hand side rather than him being too old and not being able to play there anymore. That doesn't just happen overnight. He doesn't have the same numbers because they don't have the same guy in the box putting it in, you know, and he's, he's masterful finishing and stuff like that. But look, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, Dermo, um, I mean, what, what, what front tree do you want to see today? Surely Johnson's in there, right? Your boy. Yeah, I... Look, I, I'm going to be controversial. Why not play Johnson up front? Put Johnson down the middle. What does that solve, though? We're asking well, for a guy to to play with his back to it, goal, not not not. Yeah, not well, he, I say he can give him time. I mean, he did it at Forest. He did do that role at Forest a little bit, as far as if I can remember. But look, yeah, but I, on, I, a, on a counter attacking system where there's space in mind. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I'm just going for something different, Dave. I'm mm. not going. I'm not going to try to agree. Mm. With the same narrative as all three of you, I'm going for something completely different. I'm, I, I don't want to sit here and just be like a nodding dog and say, "Yeah, I agree with you." No, me. I know so, that, but it's got to make sense as well. Like you have to understand, we're coming up. Well, no, I, I, you want to try something different, Dave. You can't hmm. keep doing the same thing now and now and again. You don't know Johnson could do that. You don't know that Kulu could do that. Kulu needs to improve. So I'm looking at from outside the box, try hmm. something completely, utterly different. So. Do you know you you're going to go with the same front three anyway? I mean, today's going to be the same front three as it was the Werner, Son, Johnson. But we need mm. to be something different. We need to be. We need to try something different. We can't be the same trick ponies all the time. Yeah, we no, can't keep that. doing the same thing. And if we try something different, try something outside the box. Other other teams are going to think, "Oh, hang on a minute, we didn't prepare for this." What's this now? Catch teams on the hop. Mm. Do you know, and and I, I, it's going to be the same front three. I agree with you with Kulu. Kulu has an opportunity to become that forward player. And he did do well against Luton. And I was one that praised him against Luton. Mm. And he, play, he did he hold up the ball well. He brought other teams in. He brought players in. He's good at that. Mm. He is lacking confidence. And we need to build his confidence up. But for playing Nottingham Forest... We need to do something different. Johnson did play for Forrest. He knows the strengths and weakness of the of the Forest defenders. Mm. So try something completely different outside the box. It doesn't mean that he's going to be the number nine going forward. But for today, try something completely different. We've tried Werner in that role. It doesn't work. We've mm. tried Sonny in that role. It didn't work against, against West Ham for every reason. Rich is not available today. Mm. So try something different. But it will, agree be the same, it, it will be the same font three that is going is that it will be played as it was in West Ham. Mm -hmm. But come on, guys, think outside the box. If we play the same predictable football all the time, teams are going to catch us out up front. Something mm. completely different outside the box, and let's see what happens. It's not like know, what, uh, what's the worst? Can, what's the worst that can happen? It's not like we're achieving the trophy here, by the no. way. We're just getting to, we're just getting top four. So it's not yeah. like and, uh, to be to be honest with you, we keep on saying about Aston Villa. Like I'm not being funny. Aston Villa are no different to us right now. Hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not like we're be, we're going against Liverpool or Man United or Manchester uh, Manchester City or Arsenal here. You know what I mean? Hmm. It, it don't make no difference whatsoever. You know, I rather like, even Andrew said it. Sorry to um, interrupt you, Dermot, but you're no, making no, a right. fantastic hmm. point here. It's as that uh, you know we've got nothing to lose. We're not getting relegated, right? It, it will help the uh, the player to realise that they're, they're better off being more adaptable to different positions, right? Which is the problem that we've got at the moment that the, the players are not adaptable to other positions, and and getting the best out of them then than just doing the same thing that we do all the time. You know what I mean? We no, can learn no, now. More now than we're going to learn in the, in in, in pre-season and then next season, which is more important next season. You know what I mean? Look, I've been navigating this at this point all season long. You know, it wasn't it was but uh, earlier on in the season when I was the only one that was coming out suggesting move some back to the left and put Richardson down the middle because I've been arguing all season this front line is nowhere near to my liking. You know, I don't think we create enough. 
But I'm also not naive enough. There's no point in playing Johnson or Son down the middle because you can't use their best attribute, which is being direct and running in behind. You're playing against a low block, and people need to understand this. You're playing with your back to goal. It's a complete different game than what you are running at teams. So there's no point of putting pace down the middle. Pace does not make a player, and it does not make a great goal scorer. The guy who scored the most goals in this club history had zero pace. Harry Kane. You know, and that's that's my point. Pace doesn't make a great striker. It's all the other attributes you need. Being able to go and challenge for a cross, you know, when, when it's in the air, not along the ground. Playing with your back to goal, you know, holding off defenders and playing other people in. It's a complete different game. And against low block teams, you have to find the right solution. And the right solution is a big guy up front. There's no point in moving Son out wide and putting Johnson down the middle. You're in effect creating the same problem. That's well, where you, look, you, you go back in the day, you go to Henri. He started as a left winger at Monaco before he went to Arsenal. Wenger moved him as a, Wenger moved him in as a striker. He had pace to burn. He wasn't great at holding up the ball, become a legend of a striker at, at Arsenal. You got other strikers, Mark Hughes and Man United back in the day. The best player you wish to keep up the ball wasn't the greatest goal scorer, but he could hold up the ball. You're right about Harry Kane. Didn't have pace, but he had the football brain to, to pull passes in. A bit like, um, who was it back in the day that could do that? I forget his name, but I, do you know what I mean? But you got to try something different. Not everyone's the same, Dave. You're right. No, I know, but that's saying. what I'm saying. No, that's what on, I'm saying. John Cooney yeah. down the middle instead of Johnson. Johnson and yeah, Son but, are the same thing. But what's, yeah, but for me, Johnson has the pace. And he's a good Yeah, but what do you not understand? Well. We're, we're, we're not playing against a team that's going to leave a whole half for us to run in behind. Yeah, but Dave, They're going to play on the edge of their box. Against, what good is pace? Yeah, but if you're playing against a low block, you can quickly counter-attack and break that low block because you've got the pace to break the back four. But we're not a counter-attacking team, though, yeah, damn it. But you're going to have to try something different. We, yeah, but what I'm trying to different. say is put moving Son out the middle to put Johnson down the middle is still relying on pace. That's not something different. That's doing the exact same well, thing. It, it something proves, different is playing with a guy who knows how to play with his back to goal. Yeah, well, it proves one thing. We desperately need a striker in the summer then. That well, I tried to one. warn everybody about that selling our striker in the thing. summer when it wasn't popular. So I'm glad we've come full circle. But look, I don't have time to get into this any longer. I do have to move and get over to We Are Tottenham TV. So guys, let's go around and plug the stuff. Uh, Dharma, we'll start with you. Yours is up on screen here. Yeah, um, guys, I'm only eight away from 1,800. So if you can get me there today before the watch long, I'd be really, really appreciated. Thanks again. How many of it? Eight. Eight away from 1,000. Come on, guys. Let's get eight years over there and let's get Dermot to that next milestone. Get over there. Smash that subscribe button right now. Dermo, you keep an eye on that. Make yeah, sure you let us know how you're getting on. I would. And thanks for having me on again. I really do enjoy coming on here and i know i robbed some people in chat the wrong way i don't really care we all do but Look, we're you didn't we all rub people up Dermot, you, here, didn't. you didn't you <laughs> didn't well i love coming on here and please like and subscribe to to um mr box office channel and dave and jack as well the brothers in arms so thank you so much well, Dermo, before we end off, make sure you let us know how we're getting on with them eight subscribers do. getting yeah, over there I so guys do. please make yeah. a conscious effort and help Dharma hit the next target Mr. Box Office, same to you, my man. I mean, you said you were only a small bit off as well. You needed, I think, four. So people, yeah. if we get four people over there to hit the subscribe button. I think it's seven or brilliant. something. But um, yeah, sorry to, to David. This is, when, when Dermot said he's rubbed up the chat in the wrong way, I was just like, really? <laughs> so, but you, you can hurt anything, but mate, honestly, just, you're a charming lad. Don't worry, mate. Um, yeah, like I said, um, thank you for inviting me, David and Jack. Um, I meant everything I said earlier today um about the, the channel on you jack um i'm not i'm not lying um and also i said I, I met what i said Dermot. you know what i mean you might have something different to me i'm not here to uh, to change your mind no i'm not um i'm here to just say what i feel and that's it and i'm, I'm never going to change yeah, and that's man. it i also um, want to plug somebody else as well because I, I i like these lads and um i've got to do it i know people don't like me to Tree but it's first kings tv um asthmatic uh, Marlon and they're has, guys. Um, because yeah. they're a good channel. Um, they deserve more than they're getting at the moment, as far as Definitely. I'm concerned. As Matt is an absolute diamond. Um, yep. I, I mean, he, 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 I can't stop getting off the phone to him. We just talk football. <laughs> um, also, um, Marlon's underrated, very, very underrated, and um, has is just cool, and that's it. And also, another person I need to do. Because I get on his nerves now. 
on the phone is Kuva. Kuva is an absolute diamond. Absolute diamond. And um, please subscribe to Free Spurs Boys, please. Yeah, because um, Bobby's a lovely guy as well. Yeah. Um, so I had to I had to do that because those two people have been very good to me as well. And Paul the Hotspur Hippie as well. Big up to you as well because yeah. this guy knew him for 20 years as Fosokoglu and he still supports Mr. Bot's office even though I don't agree with him. But big up to him as well. And that's why you should listen to him more as that's it. But it's Mr. Bot's office TV. Um, if you want to subscribe, I, I need to do more um, need to do more streams. I have to. Um, I have tried to refresh, reset, restart because um, unfortunately mental health is more important to me and life is more important to me. Like we just heard earlier today um, because there are more important things in life to worry about at the moment. So that's the only reason why I've not been on stream. No one's going to cancel me. No one's going to get rid of me because Mr. Bot's office, the main event, the professor of truth and entertainment, the ratings killer, Jack's Jack's, um, guilty pleasure and um, David's nightmare. And if, if you don't know, get to know and that's it because every single time when i'm on the stream it comes like this it goes like this yeah to lie back to reality that's what it's called back to reality mr bot's office and that's it back to you dave i'm done unbelievable uh, guys i mean if you're not entertained you gotta be now i mean that's you get over there and smash the subscribe button so that is thfc tonight i mr box office and also uh spurs king tv as well get over check out them channels as for myself and jacko we will be back here um at half five for the watch along as always good vibes especially when we're winning so make sure you go and get the drinks in the fridge, get the sandwiches or dinner at the ready and plunk yourself back down in front of TV for half five with your boys and um, where we'll be building up again to kick off and hopefully we go on and smash Forest and take home all three points. Guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this discussion. Smash that like button, smash the subscribe button. If you don't know, get to know it's your boy Big Dave and Jack on there as well. Um, but you know, but we will have Alex back on again uh, for more shows. You know, I thought it was really good. I'm glad people received them there. Uh, very well towards the end of the show and stuff like that. Also, you know, we'll have Dermot back here again next week for the um, next pre-match show. But guys, that's it from us. See you all back here at half five. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. In the we trust. We never stop. Let's go. See you, everybody. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>